<laughs> Greetings, everyone. <laughs> and welcome to a veritable volcano of vile and venomous verbiage <laughs> edition of Monster Party. Monster Party. Monster Party. Monster, monster Party. party. Wordy monster, monster Party. party. What do you think of it's when you think of Monster Party? Explosive. It's big, explosive. Arguing. No, the first sexy. thing that comes to mind. <laughs> Anger. <I'm> attractive. <laughs> the, the charismatic. Eye candy. Army. <laughs> Ear candy. Knowledgeable. Girl bait. And speak well. <laughs> I don't know if I want to go there. But speaking, speaking of, of girl bait, yes, you're, you're charming. Correct. Uh, no, speaking of charming and good looking, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, who are you, sir? I am Matt Weinhold. I am Sean Sheridan. I am Larry Stroth. And I'm James Gonis. <laughs> and for this episode. We are returning to a past game that was originally done for Patreon. Yes. Mm, it's right. got its start on Patreon. Right. And we did it and we loved it so much that we decided to do a regular episode version of it. Right. But then <laughs> we had so much fun with that one that we decided for this episode that we were going to add someone to the mix because Don't those past me. ones were with just us. That's right. <clears throat> but we felt like we needed game. You know what I mean? We needed right. some new blood, someone who knows their shit and could really smoke us when it comes to this game. <laughs> but what is this game? What is this amazing, fantastic game that people were sending emails and letters saying, you got to do this again. Yes. The name of this topic and the game is the Monster Party Word Association Game, Volume 2. The Monster Party Word Association game. Volume two. 2. Sort of like, in reality, <laughs> kind of Volume 3. But for this show, for the official this, show episode, right. this is Volume yes. 2. Right. And it's fun. And, and listeners, you can play along. Yes. It's fun. And it also will tell you a lot about yourself yes. and about other people because right. it, it's your classic word association game test, whatever you want to call it, that uh, psychiatrists and therapists have been using forever where, you know, you say a word and then that person just immediately without thinking about it too much says what they think of. And it could right. be a word. It could be a few words. It could be whatever you want. A but memory. You gotta, like, a some memory, right. Yeah, whatever. Just your impressions. But it has to be genre related because we are called Monster Party. And yes. A genre related show. Yes. Don't, and, don't get into particle physics too much or. No. You know, which I guess no. would be genre. But uh, no. But and I think with, yeah, with Monster try to Party. Stay on target. Yeah. With Monster Party, it's going to be a lot of, you know, coming up with. You know, we'll have. Movie titles, TV titles, a yeah, toy, yeah. a superhero, a comic book, that that kind of that's sure, the kind of things yeah. that we'll we'll respond with, you know. Yeah, it could be, you know, from Spider-Man to Night of the Lepus. It could be yes. anything. <laughs> so if you're looking for a self-help podcast, this is not this is the one. The, yes. This is, is no, the well, one. this will this will absolutely help you go get through all your problems. Absolutely. But Matt, anything <laughs> that you were worried about is all gonna be taken care of tonight. That's right. And, but Matt, uh, Matt, you were saying you were saying that to do this, we really needed someone who would have been uh, who would be a lot of fun to have with us. Someone special. And yes. I'm telling you, this person is very special to me. Our guest for tonight's festivities is a longtime friend of mine, a past Monster Party guest and a person who pretty much single-handedly saved my wedding. This is true. <laughs> yes, yes. Wow. He's, he's I think you did all the hard work on your No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Credit where Whoa. credit is due. Oh my goodness, uh, mystery guest. <laughs> yes, he's a brilliant comedian, podcaster, film expert, 70 millimeter film crew tech. More about that Ooh. later. Oh. And projectionist to the stars. Yeah, you heard me. Yeah. <laughs> Please welcome back the irresistibly delightful Dariana Abeda. 
<laughs> Gary, Gary Anna, Anna. thank you so much for having me. You guys Thanks are so much fun. Us. You guys oh, are we're... always so much fun. Well, thank you for saving the show. Because uh, <laughs> this is what you're doing tonight. You are saving no, the show. Of course not. If it was just you guys, it would be amazing. You guys are hilarious. Well, she, did she she saved your wedding? She did. Yes. Uh, yeah. Did, oh, was yeah. There a, was there a mess up in the booth or something? Or Well, I, I don't want to get too into it, but there were a number of, let's just say, on purpose miscommunications <laughs> with, the, with the management of the place we were getting married at, which was the uh, silent movie theater. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, we, we panicked. There were things that like all of a sudden a, a charge came in that w- we weren't expecting. And I would call Gary Anna and she'd say, let me take care of it. And it would get taken care of. And she saved the day. She saved the day. Yeah. She's like, that, you know, like that was such a, have you ever talked about that, Matt? Cause that was such a fun wedding. That was mm-hmm. like the funnest wedding it, ever. Yeah. It was. It, it, really, was, it was very amazing. special. And I alluded no, it to was, it. It was a yeah. blast. It, it, for goodness sake, you ran through the theater with the tingler. It, it was yes, amazing. Yeah. We had, it was uh, the part of the wedding was tingler themed. But yes. it was also horror movie and B movie related. We had oh, uh, right. we had food that was yeah. uh, named food. after various uh, movie directors, and there was like an yeah. Argento slider and like all yeah. this kind of stuff. <laughs> and it was great. We showed a lot of my sixteen millimeter films, and mm-hmm. Gary Ann is in the booth running them. And uh, yeah. I mean, and for listeners, it was like as as a guest there, it was like I was watching this terrific show a yeah, show yeah. that involved both people on stage there was you know projection of movies there was food then there was action down the the aisle way i mean and it laughs. was like a, and there were loads of, of laughs, laughs. Dana, it was, dana dana gould dana yeah. gould the, married you the great dana gould uh officiated <laughs> my wedding and was magnificent and uh there it was just it was full of surprises and it was the type of wedding that when we were going into it, we thought it would be great to have a wedding where people weren't waiting for the moment where they could leave. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, wow. and I think we, okay. I think we accomplished that. Yeah. And I, and I, and I'm happy to say the thing that makes me really happy about that, all that work that went into that amazing wedding. And I think I can go out on a limb here and say that you and that lovely lady are still together. We're still I'm, together. Yeah, we I'm are. So <laughs> yeah, which I also happy. credit to Gariana Beta. She is, <laughs> no, no. I don't know how many times <laughs> I was like, you know what? And she, and Gary would call her and go, I'm out. I can't handle this. Goes, she know, talked her off the down, ledge. Calm <laughs> down. Bring it. Reel it back in. We always knew. It was like kind of a, well, I guess there was more than this secret. With the Sin family, but um, we did a lot of weddings to yeah. help. Oh, pay bills they would do, and they didn't talk about it a lot, but they did a lot of weddings, and we could always really? tell the ones that were going to make it. <laughs> really, <laughs> that, that is wow. And wow, it, it, like Match was one of those ones that you were like, okay, this is this oh, one's going to last forever. Very- this one's the. We're yeah. gonna have to do another show on this. This yeah. is really <laughs> yeah. a shot. Yeah. 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 No, no, it is. You you could tell it, any time that they were having, like he said, they were both happy to be there. It was fun. Mm-hmm. People were laughing. People didn't want to leave. And then just also inviting the staff to j- have something to eat, join of course, dance with yes. and all that went on. Like you could tell yeah. when it was that kind of a joyous occasion yeah. we yeah, always no. would know and then the ones were there it was just everything was wrong and they were <laughs> already they, it was just a fight yeah and Ooh. everybody was like oh, on yeah. uh, you know tension and all that you would right. just go like yeah there this this isn't gonna work. <laughs> wow. nothing but a joy more yeah. people should more people should have tingler themed weddings basically <laughs> yeah. that's the that's the yeah. moral yes of the story. yeah and 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 I have to say that place is perfect for a wedding. It was it was such Absolutely. a great, such a great venue. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was it was there were some threats of rain and they drizzled a little bit, but we had a red carpet and we had mm. we hired someone who was like a like a paparazzi type reporter 
Mm-hmm. It was on the carpet interviewing people. And it was just, yeah. yeah. And people dressed vintage Hollywood mm-hmm. style. And so, yeah, it was, it was <laughs> glorious. But, you know, this is, this is. Didn't Dana Gould have a Shriners hat on? He yeah, did. he's wearing a fez. Yeah. yeah, fez. Yeah. 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 A fez. That's what it's called. Yeah. Fez. Yeah. And, and, you know, Gariana, this is, this is great, but we'll save this for our weddings episode <laughs> where we can go into more detail. <laughs> yes, right. But today it's more on word association. Word I'm association. Sure You're correct, just Larry. Dying to, they're just dying to get into this. All right. Great. Well, we should let Gariana go first, I think. Yes. you. Yes. We're going to start with oh, you. I have to go first? Okay. Well, yeah. you, you, you just guess, throw us a word, and if, then if we'll you, each go around and, and talk about what we okay. thought. Okay. And then in the spirit of today and the news and everything, <laughs> okay. uh, the first word I came up with was interstate. Interstate. Wow. Interstate. 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 Huh. Ooh. Interstate. 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 Okay. I think I got something. I think I have something too. Okay. Right. Sean, go uh, for it. I, okay. Why? Well, or, or, or Larry. Or Larry. I'm sorry. We can go. Well, go, ahead, go. This is stupid, but it's like, again, the way you play the game is you say the word, and then what is the first thing that comes into your mind? And maybe because right. I saw this not so long ago, the first thing that came to my mind was the movie Duel. Oh, okay. that's a good one. This is yep. a Steven Spielberg film. The first thing, I mean, it's this this battle between uh, Dennis Weaver, who's in this car, and this mysterious driver of a big truck. And, you know, I, I saw it not too long ago, and it was the European version, which, you know, which, which was interesting. And they, they apparently there's more footage in here that I didn't see when I was younger. And the whole thing takes the majority of about 90 percent of it takes place on a freeway or on a right. road. That's right. Yeah. Street. So that's the first thing that popped into my head. Great. Nice. That's, a good, that's great. Yeah. What a great movie. Duel is. Of course. Yeah. One of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Sh- Sean. Sean. Well, I'm thinking along the same lines because I also think of the interstate highway and traveling on the roads. I, I also think of being chased and what came to mind immediately. I know it's a favorite movie of Matt's as well is race with the devil. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Great yeah. classic seventies drive-in action horror film with uh, Peter Fonda, Warren Oates, Loretta Swit uh, being pursued by Satanists across the country. <laughs> they're, they're traveling. In, yeah. They're traveling in an RV. They accidentally saw <laughs> this, uh, this ritual where these Satanists sacrifice this girl and now they're on the run and nobody believes them. And it's great. Cause it's, it's like, it's kind of like dirty Mary and crazy Larry meets like a Satanist movie. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's great. Yeah. And, and it's one of those movies too, where I felt like there should have, like Winnebago should have released a race with the devil Winnebago. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> you know? Some action playset, maybe a little toy. Sure, like, little, yeah. Like, a matchbox car of the Winnebago with like little oh, Satanist man. figures. And you know what else? <laughs> you know what I think was a missed opportunity here is you know when you have a company like Hey Winnebago, and they should have given out maps saying retrace your steps from race from the devil. You know, <laughs> yeah. you could relive right. it by going on this route. You know, this is where the devil worshipers were. And this is, <laughs> you know, take your Winnebago out there, relive the movie. Yeah. They could have done some, some clever, uh, motion, but, but I mean the movie, cause that, that came out of time when of course, you know, chase movies and action, you know, drive in films with car chases and crashes were very popular. And so was Satanism in films. And they really, really did a perfect hybrid movie of the two genres i, I mean, agree you know it's it's like they didn't fail on either it. one it's it's really I works love well i love it I, yeah. I go back to that a lot yeah yeah and great. gariana have you seen this movie i haven't seen this one i it's wrote great. i wrote it now it's okay. great it's, it's lean and down. lean and mean it's and just like it's a 70s it's a 70s-esque yeah uh, classic 70s feel yeah and there's form. some like the wives in it it's loretta swit and um um uh, Angelique uh, from Dark Shadows, yes. Laura Parker, yes, yes. and yeah. yes. There, and there, we needed more nudity, I guess. But well, you know. <laughs> that's always that's always helpful. But with Laura Parker, it was one of those things where she, she's constantly making coffee, and you know what I mean. And she's like kind of almost fainting, and there's a lot of that. And Laura, of course, Loretta Swit is the tougher of the two, but yeah, still right, right. kind of in that sort of housewife role. So that's. You know what it is, but yes, that, oh, that dates a little bit. Yeah, yeah. 
But Whoa. but there's some great scenes. There's some really I, I, great scenes. I will say this, Matt, and maybe you agree with me. I mean, I'm familiar with Loretta Swift from MASH, and it was neat to see her in something completely something different. Else, yeah, yeah. Totally yeah. different. Her character yeah. is completely different, and she's I really agree. good. Yep. Yeah. There there you go. So that was my that was my uh well I immediately went to a, a movie with Interstate in the title, which was a TV movie from 1976 called yeah. Smash Up on Interstate 5. Yes. With Robert Conrad. <laughs> nice. Where, again, it was all like movies like Convoy were in theaters and you had uh, yes. BJ, BJ and the Bear on TV. Uh-huh. And it was <laughs> all about that. And I got to admit, I've never seen this movie, but I've, I've, I was 11 when it was on TV. And it's just one of those titles that's always, I guess it's about a pile up on inter- Interstate it is. Five and yes, you've yeah, seen it, that, Sean, huh? Yes, I have a DVDR of it, of course. It's never oh, been officially no. released. It's great though. It's basically like a low rent, cheap, you know, TV movie. Does they try to make it as a you know a disaster movie uh, on on the interstate? But yeah, it's all these all the different little soap opera stories about all the people on the on the sure, freeway yeah, as they're right, you know, yeah. as they're, It's great. It's great. Wait, wait, Sean, are you saying that that's something that hasn't been like really released on DVD? It's it's, no, I don't think it's. I don't think it's ever been released. Wow, uh, it's uh, a lot it's of those Robert... TV movies haven't been released. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. But just just to give you an idea, I mean, this is the kind of, like this is like talk about an all star seventies cast. You got Robert Conrad, Buddy Epson, uh, Herb <laughs> Edelman, David Groh, Scott Jacoby, Sue Lyon, Donna Mills, Vera Miles. Wow, Tommy nice Lee one. Jones. I mean, it's everybody. Tommy Lee Jones. Yes, and this is this wow. came out in 1976. It's it's great. Wow. Yeah, that's it should be somebody vinegar syndrome. Somebody should put it out in Blu-ray because it's great. Wow, yeah, a lot of those, I love like, it. Warner Warner Archive might put one or two out of oh, yes, yeah, but maybe, that's yeah. it. You the, know, the, the 70s TV movie genre in general is just amazing. How it's been for the most part, with some exceptions, it's been ignored as far as uh, digital releases. It's crazy. Yeah. There's so much good stuff. True. Yeah. Well, well, Matt, what about, go, yeah. You guys go deep. That yes, was we do. <laughs> Wait, Matt, that was impressive. Well, well, Matt, what do you think when you when you heard Interstate? Well, it took me a second, but then what came to my head was Escape from New York. Ah. Because, because I imagine I'm in the neighboring state <laughs> and I'm everything's groovy and cool. And then I go into New York and there's, and Manhattan is a prison. So it's a, a, quite a, a shock. Right. It's quite jarring to like, holy shit. Uh, so you guys, uh, wow. So the whole tourist <laughs> thing is, you know, those like little telescope things that you would look at Niagara Falls with. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You can have yeah. a bunch of those where you can just look into the prison. Like, oh, wow. That's, <laughs> wow. Someone's beheading someone. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and I get a wow. t-shirt of that. Uh, Wow. And so yeah, I mean that's what I think of. I just think of that that that's got to be a, a rarity at the time. Well, I'm although you never know, like because you don't really get the backstory of what the entire United States is. You could tell it's that's true. It's, it's yeah. definitely creeping towards totalitarianism. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's what I thought of. And um, okay, all right, okay. And and so nice. yeah, I would want to go from my state to that state just for vacation. <laughs> all right. <laughs> All right. I love okay. that movie so much. I love that movie so oh, much. Me too. Oh, yeah. It's great. Really? Uh, one of my all time favorites. And it gets better with time. It does. Yeah, it does. Yes. It does. And especially when you think of how, I mean, it was done on such a small budget and it's, you know, the effects, all the effects, effects yeah. very cleverly using uh, limited, their limited effects. Like it just, it just, it's a great low budget driver movie. And that's what always like the, the glass the music, and mats. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Yeah. It's fantastic. Music's incredible. Mm-hmm. The uh, effects, the, uh, the whole, the posters, the posters are. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And Snake Plissken, by the way, is one of our cast members. <laughs> James Gonis did cosplay at Comic Con in right. the perfect Snake Plissken costume. He, in fact, Thank like you. he recreated the tattoo, you know, the... in his loins. That one, the the snake <laughs> on the abs. And uh, he had the he bought like a uh, the watch, the countdown watch that was like a perfect replica. And right. you put some money into that thing. That was uh, four hundred yeah, bucks. And put it, it was up, uh, put it so I can see. Oh, nice. yeah, that costs 400 bucks for <laughs> worth every penny. Yeah. That well, is you know, so good. Go, yeah. go big or go home. Right. Right. And, 
And it's a and it's fun cosplay too, because a lot of cosplay you wear masks and you're really disguised. Yeah, this, this one is just an eye patch, and I could still sort of have the attitude, and and I never have to smile, so that's a plus. <laughs> and, and people right. would yell at him. I thought you were dead. No, and it took me a while to come up with a comeback, and finally I came up with fake news. <laughs> oh, nice. 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 And yeah, for, for listeners, and for listeners, just to let you know, James really went all out. I mean, he like worked out and stuff, and yes, so he, did. Yeah. he yeah, looked he yummy. No, 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 he looked. If if we post a picture of him, he looks great. Thank you. I yeah, mean, you, I yes. could, I mean, I could never pull that off. That's I could do band, that. Spandex I, vest is not forgiving. So, well, you know, I I, I could <laughs> I could easily do Homer Simpson, but I can't do. <laughs> well, we're going to release a uh, just a just a James Gonus calendar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, oh, so let me down for two copies. Don't ask. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. So, G- Gariana, this that Kickstarter was... is already going. So, Gariana, that's a great. That was a great word. Okay. Oh, well, Gariana, but did you? Did you I yourself? Oh, what was yours? Yeah. Did you, did you think of anything? Did you think of anything yourself the... though with that name? Oh, oh, did you? oh, we have to go back to me. I thought if you gave well, the word, well, well. Well, no, I mean, like, I'm what were you curious. thinking when you came up with Intercept? Well, what, what, what did you yeah. have on uh, uh, O.J. Simpson uh, passing away. Him, oh, you oh know, yeah. Funny. Oh, of course. Okay. You're right. That's what I came up well, with and, and what I, of course, thought was the movies. You know, well, that uh, he, and he was in some very. Cap- Capricorn One. Yeah. Capricorn One. Yeah. The, the Cassandra Capricorn Crossing. One. Towering Inferno. Uh, Tower, yeah, Towering Inferno. I, God, I know you forget. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, Capricorn the One Gun, also right? an interstate. Gun yeah. <laughs> naked Hilarious Gun. Yes. In, in Naked Gun. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's right. That's right. Hilarious. So that is actually the impetus of that one. Um, gotcha. I, okay. Okay. I just thought of that, but I had no idea where you guys were going to take it. And that was <laughs> that's it. that's how we roll. Yeah, that's, that's how we do it. That's how we do that's it. That's how we roll. And I'm, I'm our minds sure... are always we're lost in that world. It, it all was the time. Really? And I'm deep. sure I'm sure listeners had other thing ideas yes. when they thought of Interstate 2. All right. But I've got one for you guys. Okay. Here we okay. go. The word is jack-o'-lantern. Again, jack-o'-lantern. the word is jack-o'-lantern. It's all one word. Okay. It well, is. Hyphenated is what, you one word. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what? You're going to make me say the word no, is that jack? Works. That's fine. No, that, that's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jack-o'-lantern. It it's one sure. word. It is. Okay. It is. I'm, not, I'm not challenging it. Well, okay, because it sounded like you were challenging it. No, it just happened For a second, it did, yes. One, oh. To be fair. Oh. Oh, I can't wait for yours. <laughs> but, uh, so what is it? What do you think of when you hear the word jack-o'-lantern? Gariana. Jack Frost was the first thing that came oh. into my mind. That Jack the Frost. film. Yeah, Jack Frost. I, I wish something cooler would have come into it. Like <laughs> I wish I could go, oh, nightmare before curse myself. But Jack Frost was the first one that popped into my head. That was the I'm Michael Keaton? Here, 19, 1997? Uh, the horror one or the other one? The horror one. Yeah, the, the horror, horror one. Right, right. The horror yeah. one's great. It's, a, it's the killer snowman movie. Yeah. And you know what? That what? that snowman <laughs> looks like a jack-o'-lantern, a snow jack-o'-lantern. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. But that's what I thought of. The okay. jack Frost, that, that horror film from okay. 97. And, nice. Uh, I don't think it's very, I, I don't remember it being incredibly good, but that is what popped in, into my mind. Was you know that what? One. It, it's better than you remember. Yes. It's, it's oh, good. That, see, that's nice because now I'll revisit it. <laughs> it's good enough to make a sequel, though. I think they made at least one sequel, maybe two. Okay. <laughs> so, still, well, they're still melting. That doesn't matter, though, right? They just, I mean, they, it just, makes ma- sense. <laughs> they just make a right. sequel. They just make I mean, them. They went to space with, the, you know, they took Jason. Leprechaun, <laughs> space. Yeah. Jack Frost in space. That's yeah. great. That's a great Because awesome. it's cold in space, so he could be floating around. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. right. Whenever they go to space, I just love it, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope they I mean... keep making air buds until they go into space. <laughs> <laughs> air bud in space. That's my drink. That's well, my Sean, drink. What do you, Sean, what do you think when you... The uh, I, I think I, I thought of basically any incarnation of Sleepy Hollow. Ooh. Okay. 
you know, I, right. I thought maybe we'd go to Halloween, but it kind of went to, because, you know, the Sleepy Hollow, yeah, and Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow, yeah, you know, sure. throwing, throwing the jack o' lantern. And yeah, I just, yeah. That's, what, that's what I thought of. So that's the image. Good. Nice. James? I love the Tim Burton one. I, yeah. I, I, me too. Yeah, no, I love one of his best movies. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Well, huh. I mean, for me, it's it's Halloween. I, I love okay. in particular talking about John Carpenter's scores. I love the opening title of the original Halloween Classic. and Hel- Halloween, too. And when I saw the Blumhouse Halloween, the first one, what I enjoyed most about it for, for the whole running time was the opening titles because it was like <laughs> fan service. It's like, yes, thank you. There's the music. There's the slow zoom into the jack-o'-lantern. Um, right. And I just love it. Me too. And Matt, what do you think of when you hear the word Jack O'Lantern? Well, I thought of Halloween, but I thought specifically Halloween three. Mm. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> right. Because that's the that is what appeared in front of my head. It was the uh those masks. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. The silver shamrock pumpkin mask, which yep. is so cool. Yeah. Which I yeah, watched because, again because uh, Pluto TV is playing all that stuff again and again and again. Right, like, right. And, See, uh, you know, and I, it, yeah, it's it's funny. It's it's my least favorite, but it's like it's been a while. I do like the little tune. Happy, happy Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. I do like that. I but, like it more every time I see it. Me too. Like, me, me too. too. I, I see, feel I, like uh, it's so crazy. Yeah. And yeah. and there's some things that I forgot. Like I forgot about. There's a, not to give you a spoiler but there's a there's a certain character that has an android moment let's just say yeah yeah that i like i i did not see coming yeah it's so good and and the the effects are great too yeah see and also, also and let's let's be frank we we call it oh halloween three remember it the title was halloween three season of the witch yes and if i remember correctly deborah hill had said that well the original idea is we're going to do these films called Halloween and it'll be a different story each time after they got to Halloween three, but Halloween three, my understanding is it didn't do that well. And that kind of killed right. it right. And, right. until they went back to, well, we're just going to do the Michael Myers thing, you know, and that, I'm that surprised. turned into like today they should make an, like a Netflix series called Halloween True. and yeah. do it as an anthology. So you do it as one yeah. hour under the umbrella title of Halloween or season summer. of the witch Halloween, you know, wrath of the warlock, whatever it is like, do that, <laughs> you know, like you could do some cool stuff. Just like yeah. show. Yeah. yeah. Yes, definitely. Well, look, the reason why I brought it up is I have these little toys. They're fan produced and they are Halloween Ben Cooper, Halloween costumes. Oh yeah. The, on the size of Amigo figure. Right. And they came with a little <laughs> pumpkin jack-o'-lantern. And I have several jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. And maybe it's the thought of like being a kid and having your jack-o'-lantern pumpkin and getting candy in it. And I just get really emotional uh, about it. And I had a, a very th- special thick orange one that I just loved and cherished. And you know what I did? This Okay, just... This makes me so angry. So my favorite, my, mo- my most favorite and precious Halloween pumpkin that I had as a kid, I actually brought it into work one day during the Halloween time. Oh. It was like the week for Halloween. And I filled it with candy. And I put it out for everyone to help themselves with candy. And for some reason, the boss thought it would be funny to take this cheap pumpkin and actually cut it in half. And what? put the scatter some like uh, wrappers around it to make it look like someone like you know tore it apart. And he, That's thought it was funny. Up. he did not. <laughs> yeah. He did not Jeez. realize that the pumpkin that he destroyed was over twenty something years old. Did you tell him? Came, of course, I told him, and of course, he felt <laughs> terrible. And of course, he tried to get me. He went out and picked out a pumpkin. About, oh, great, a cheap one from Walmart. He goes, "Isn't that the same pumpkin?" I go. Uh, no, it is what you described. Of, of, of all the people that he would do that to. Yes. And, and <laughs> like, you know, yeah. it's like, like, uh, of, yeah, of course, yeah. I, I never let him forget it. Of course. Um, Cause we, you guys know how I am holding right. on. Yeah, to, I get it. Know, I would, yeah, I would be face. pissed too. And, and so I actually had to find another one on eBay. Right. You know, this is, you know, I mean, this is like kind of a long winded story, but I have that and I cherish it. Of course, my original was destroyed by somebody else. And I was trying to do something nice for the people I worked yeah, with. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Anyway. Did you save the so, pieces? 
I think I still have the pieces. Yeah, it's perfect. You could, you could, no, you could, you know, what you could do is you could, you know, like, you can melt. I know you can well, melt it, Larry. No, no you can't no, melt hey, that type of. Well, I'm not. Well, okay, I'm what? not saying what? that. No, what? you take, you take. Is is the face complete? Yeah, you yeah. take the face and you do like a shadow box kind of thing, and you See? get black velvet and you put yes. that as the background, and then you put the piece of the plastic pumpkin in there and then you put yes. little pieces of candy all around the outside of it yes. and it's a beautiful mm -hmm. art yeah. piece that's, that's a true. lovely idea matt but every time i would look at it it's like that's the item that someone destroyed all right okay that, so Fair i enough. can't go there but anyway okay jack jack-o-lantern thank nice. you guys like for thank you nice. all right very good sean, <laughs> sean why don't you give us a word all right here's one all right what do you think of when you think of rain lane Rain, rain, rain. Okay, is an R A I N. Yes. Okay, got it. No. Okay, I got it. You guys, all have something. I have yeah. something. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Again, the way you play the game, the first thing that pops yeah, in your yeah. head, and I have Here. no control over it. <laughs> right, right, right. Gary, I understand. Yeah, but... uh, Black Rain, the film Black Rain. Okay, where, really, really, Scott. Uh, my, yeah, where of course, as you all know, Michael Douglas is a samurai. Right. warrior like why wouldn't you think <laughs> yeah yeah saw, right in 1980 you immediately thought of that the yeah. second you saw michael <laughs> douglas in anything boy he should play samurai. like not a the, samurai not, but not the pinnacle been. of genre or would it be uh, because well but it's it's really scott it's very stylized it's like it's like yeah very it's, stylized it's, yeah and he is a samurai so <laughs> Kind of, yeah, so, I, I guess yeah. that would be fantasy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Directed by Ridley Scott. Right. Directed by Ridley Music Scott. By Hong Zimmer. Has yeah. one of my favorite shots in a film of all time. He's on the motorcycle and he's just going after the guy dragging the samurai sword. And in nice. the dark, it's all lit up. The streets are wet, you know, from the black rain. And he's <laughs> on the motorcycle dragging. There's sparks coming off the sword. Yeah, that's what I thought of Black Rain. And yeah. have, I'd be impressed if any of you guys saw that. I, I saw oh, that. I think yeah. I saw it in the theaters, and I was not that impressed by the movie as far as the storytelling. And it was very was very by the numbers as far as the buddy cop thing that it followed. He knew where it was going to go, but it was visually just so amazing. I don't know how well that movie did, but uh, yeah, not as a, as a as an actual whole movie. A little disappointing, but visually it was. It's, it'd be kind of fun to revisit that. Actually, yeah, it, I've not seen it. So, I, yeah. I, I, I'm a big fan of it. Actually, I saw <gasps> it twice wow. in, in a theater wow. back in the day. I love Ken Takakoro is this legendary Japanese actor, and he plays off Michael Douglas really well. Yeah, and there's also you know Andy Garcia is really good in it, and you get a lot of Osaka. The whole thing takes place in Osaka. Yeah, that's another reason to like it, it, a lot of the stuff in Japan. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now one now of the I better decapitation it. scenes in a film I've ever seen. Too. Oh, there you go. Okay, yeah, now, yeah. You sold me now. Yeah, I'm and, in. Uh, and uh, I, and a finger uh, decapitation uh, too. The guy cuts off his pinky. Right. You're right. Finger yeah, decapitation. Right. Totally, it's been a long time. <laughs> Someone uses yeah. a finger to cut someone's head off. I'm gonna, re <laughs> I'm gonna revisit it as well. Yeah, I'm gonna have to revisit it too. Yeah, for sure. Gariana, okay. I, I remember, I remember the poster, and I remember Michael Douglas was had his arms crossed. On the motorcycle, and he had like a toothpick Someone or something. Yeah, see, yeah. I didn't like the poster. I thought he was trying too hard. It, well, it was. And, and, the movie's a bit over the top. It's and then look, yeah. look, look. I think that was maybe a, just too much of a hard push for me, and because that's what I remember the preview, but the poster kind of killed it for me. But now, thanks to James, I, I I'm going to see this. I'm going to check then, it out. And then to include Good Carl job, James Malden in Asian makeup, which just <laughs> I didn't. I just didn't think it was very tasteful. Uh, uh, is Carl Malden in it? <laughs> no. Larry. And when and when and when the Fu Manchu character shows up, it just oh, goes. It, yeah. it's like it jumps yeah. the shark. All right, all right. So, okay. So, so Black Rain was yours. Okay. That, Look, I, yeah. I hope I didn't take anybody else's. Well, no. <laughs> okay. So okay. look, John, when you said rain again, it was the first thing that. Popped in my head. And look, I'm, I really like Kirsten Dunst. I really like her. And mm. there's a sequence in the uh, Tobey Maguire Spider Man directed oh, yeah. by Sam Raimi. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. A very iconic scene. It is a beautiful sequence where 
after Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man saves Kirsten Dunst and he kind of comes down in this alleyway and he's hanging upside down and it's raining and she comes over and she kind of pulls his mask off a little bit just to expose his lips and they kiss and then he zaps back up and there's this great shot of her looking up and she's yes. very excited and mm-hmm. and she's she is absolutely beautiful in that film and look she's aged well she's i, I love you her. know yeah she, I think she's a very talented actress. I but agree. That sequence was actually shot on the Wonder Brothers lot, and I believe on on their tour. Every time they take people by this this little alleyway where Edward G. Robinson was, and every they always bring up, "Well, oh, this is the famous Spider Man sequence where oh. you know Kirsten Dunst was kissing." You know, I did Mike. win MTV's Best Kiss Award. Hey, uh, there you go. Uh, uh, so, I mean, well, you know, come on, Larry. Okay, credit where well, credit's due, sir. Well, look, I'm just saying that, look, Sam Raimi, very special place in my heart for him. And this was an amazing Spider-Man movie. It was so exciting to see. And this is really before the big push of all the other all superhero the films. Yes. Yeah, right. So that is the second one, though. No, no, no. It's the first that was one. That's the first, the first, yeah. first yeah. one. And, and so that rain sequence is a great sequence. So that's what popped in my well, head. Also, at... Comic Con, I forget if it was that year or years later, but somebody, one of the booths did like a little photo op thing that you could do where it was Spider Man uh, kind of hanging down and you upside could be, down. Yeah. And so I have a picture of me leaning in to give him the kiss. No. <laughs> nice. yes. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Nice. That's great. Anyway, nice. so that was mine. Very James. good. Oh, I like that, that was really good, uh, <laughs> yeah. Larry. Thank you. I James, really James. enjoyed your story. That was really excellent. And Thank I you. am also a huge fan of Sam Raimi, but did not like those Spider-Mans at all. And but really? then I got, I got injured. I, I was working at Arclight. I think you guys all know. I missed a stair, drove my foot oh. into the bottom of the stair and ruptured all the blood vessels. Oh, my, my gosh. Yeah. So... When I went to the hospital, I had to keep my foot elevated. I couldn't do anything. Oh. I was at home and I was just watching all the movies I had because that's all I could do. I couldn't move the foot because wow. they were like, you have to keep it elevated. This is how like when you see homeless people and stuff and they're like missing toes and like half a foot. Right. It, that's yeah, why. Yeah. They, yeah. they have something like this happen and they don't have the the resources to care for it. So I had to keep my foot prop for like two weeks. So I rewatched it and it completely and utterly blew me away. I think I was wildly expecting something different from Sam Raimi, who I'm a big fan of. And I love the evil dead. I, it's just so good. And, and drag me to hell is incredible. Yeah. And uh, I thought he missed and I was really wrong. I was really wrong. And they are two of my favorite comic book movies now. The two that he did. I think I was just expecting something different. And uh, they're they're so good. They're the so first good. one, especially. I think is yeah yeah perfect. Yeah, because it really brought the. I mean, before that, we really just had you know Superman the movie, but that was still kind yes seventies. Like this really yes. brought superhero into the modern filmmaking age that paved the way for like Iron Man and, and yeah, all right. the MCU. Show stuff. you not, it could be done. Not the yeah. sidetrack, but I remember distinctly when I saw that this film in a packed theater, it had come out, this was after 9-11 and there was a big thing about removing the, um, the twin towers in the movie. And when that right. film, and when the film came out, it was the way that, Sam Raimi designed it the way he directed it, the way the camera moves and how he decided how Spider-Man should go at that end, the very end with him going up to the top of those buildings with the American flag. It was so powerful. Yeah. And the whole audience just started applauding. I mean, yeah. at, a, at a superhero movie. Yeah. And it was like, people were so excited because as we know, Sam Raimi, you know, he likes to move the camera. He likes to do, mm-hmm. do things. And I'm just saying that, that film, I thought it was a, a he did a great job. And yes, superhero movies had have advanced since then. I'm just saying that at that point in our history, what he had done 
And the cast that he put together was just fantastic. And I, I just loved it. But that rain sequence is the thing one that I remember. Uh, Still, uh, absolutely. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Still so my J- favorite Spider-Man movie. James, how about yeah. you? James. Well, the first thing that came to my mind was Psycho. When uh, Marion Crane is mm. driving ah. on, the, on, the, on the interstate. Yes. That's and, right. uh, the rain is beating down on her windshield. Is that music and playing? The music's yeah. playing and the wiper blades are going back and forth. So she has to pull into the Bates Motel and the, the rain on the windshield and the blades going back and forth sort of foreshadow what happens to her in the shower. True. Um, oh. So that's where right. my mind went, actually. Yeah. Like wow. It. That's nice, James. Wow. Yeah. Matt, how about you, Rain? Well, I'm surprised uh, someone hasn't got to this before me, but the first thing I thought of was The Devil's Rain. Oh, Oh. nice. I mean, that movie is so much fun and so weird and strangely scarier than it should be. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's because, you know, when you got Ernest Borgnine, (laughs) when he wants to play a heavy, Oh, oh man, does he do a good job? Oh yes. And then you've got you know Tom Skerritt and Shatner and you know I mean no, that's that's fantastic just, cast. I love it. I love it. It was Ida Lupino, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, spoiler alert: there is a devil's reign, <laughs> <laughs> and there are all these devil worshiping people, and you've got Ernest Borgnine as this crazy horn demon guy. And all of a sudden, this rain comes, and I'm not going to give you the reason why it comes, but it it comes. And as it's raining down on everyone, their skin starts to melt. Oh. And it's one of those things where you go, like, I would have already liked this movie yeah. if I didn't yeah. have this scene. <laughs> if Devil's Rain was more of a you know a metaphor or something, but no, it is a literal <laughs> Devil's Rain that melts people's faces. I love it when anyone melts in a movie. I really do. Yeah. And, and it's and one it's, of my favorite things. Incredible yeah, yeah, Melting true. Man. Anytime someone starts to fall apart, that scene yeah. in um, Bright Night. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jer- I mean, Jerry good. Dandridge, yeah. Yeah, Jerry Dandridge's uh, helper yes. starts to fall apart. I, I mean, I love that. And so, yeah, it's great. And uh, if it's slipped through the cracks in your movie watching, find it, enjoy yeah. it, love it, okay. embrace it be it and it's it's also it's this massive set piece at the end of the movie like it, it they, yes. in, they yeah. indulge they indulge in this sequence like it kind of <laughs> right. goes on and on and yeah. on. Like, all it needed was like that could be turned into a musical i think yeah, yeah yes. <laughs> yes all singing amazing. all dancing the devil's rain all raining all melting all yeah. raining all raining all melting uh, well sean well, what did you think well i i actually it's funny that uh Gariana picked Black Rain, directed by Ridley Scott, because I actually think the first thing I think of is Blade Runner. Oh, it's yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's so much a part of the movie and the atmosphere and the yes. vibe of that film. You know, um, it's almost always raining, and I, I love it. So I always think of that movie, too. Coolest Great umbrellas sequence. in any film. Yes. We all agree. yes. Yeah, and well, I, actually, I actually have one of those umbrellas. My wife got me one for Christmas. You are wow. It has a light. I just haven't, haven't had a chance to use it that much because it's it never custom? raining at night. Uh, no, it's like a guy knows it's a company makes them, and it's like it's the action, it's a full black umbrella with the whole the whole staff lights Is up. Is it it's Blade Runner licensed? Licensed, Is it no, but it's Runner? exactly it. It's, no, it's a guy. Oh, just, well, then I guess it's no, not it's really I'm telling okay. you. You mean, you mean they didn't put like a little, little, come over, put like a little Blade Runner, on yeah, yeah, the yeah, like that. I don't want that. Like the yeah. Ertel cars, you know? Yeah. No, I want it to look like as I'm actually in the movie with it. It's, it's pretty awesome. Oh, my so. God. I'm so jealous. Yeah. We I'm going to move to Seattle all... or something so I can use it more. We have to all get one of those before we go back to Japan so we can all yes. carry one. Yes. Oh, yes. Good idea. Nice. Great idea. Nice. Very yeah. good. All right, James, give us a word. The word is basement. Ooh, let's go. Basement. On. All right. Mm. Got it. That's easy first, for me too. First thing, first thing that popped in my head. Hey, do I go first? You go if first. you'd like. Basket case. Oh, uh, okay. Basket uh, case. Uh, Basket uh, case was the first thing that popped into my head. 82. Was that 82, boys? Yeah. Think so, yeah. April yeah. 7th, 1982. April 7th, Whoa. 1982. Really? I, do not like, I do not like that. It was released oh. on my birthday then. That's amazing. 
It's so scary. It's don't it's don't revisit that. Don't watch. It's too scary. <laughs> Basket case. <laughs> oh no, I think it should be revisited. It's fantastic. Because, because I remember, it, you know, you've been right about I, a lot of things, Larry. No, 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 no. no I love no, that movie. No, first of all, I I saw that at an art house. I remember being so excited about. Oh, I've heard about this low budget cult film called Basket Case. I was really excited about this and. For listeners, there's there's full frontal male nudity in it. You know, that's something you don't see every day. But but it was so creepy. And I didn't know where it was gonna go and where it was gonna end, but great sequence in a in a basement. So that's a nice True. one. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it, it, it terrifies me. I mean, I mean, seriously, I'll beg people, don't watch it. <laughs> no. Okay. There's well, sometimes they're, they're so effective in doing film work. I just spend too much time alone. In the dark, you have to be careful. That's one that's just, it's terrifying. Yeah. It's terrifying. Any of the Ari Oster films, oh, you know, oh, yeah. well, that's, sure. other, that, that's yeah. hardcore for sure. You yeah. can't yeah. watch, yeah. you can't watch hereditary. Like it, that has ruined my life. It's ruined my life. It's the feel good movie of the, of the year. <laughs> I play it on Easter. It ruined oh. my life. It, it, <laughs> you think about it, you can't sleep. I tell people, don't, don't, don't watch it. Don't watch it. <laughs> well, James, no. James, when I, when you said basement, the first thing that popped in my head, we were speaking about Sam Raimi. Garanna mentioned Evil Dead. And I remember seeing, going to the theater to see the original Evil Dead. Mm-hmm. And there's a whole <sighs> sequence of something that's in the basement. Yes. And talk about something that kind of freaks you out. You know, people would criticize the the original Evil Dead saying, look, it's low budget. Some of it was shot in 16 millimeter. The acting may not be the greatest. Some of the makeup effects aren't that great. But the funny thing is they put in everything. There's forced perspective, animation. There's creepy makeup effects. There were so many crazy things that Sam Raimi threw in this film. And there's this whole sequence of something in the basement. And and some girl may appear to be possessed. And there's a moment when they've changed it and you hear her speak in her regular voice. I'm OK now. I'm OK. Please yeah. let me out. And it's such a creepy thing. But that's the first thing that popped in my head when I when I heard basement. Uh, like that's it. Sam Raimi's evil dad. Ooh. Nice. Sean, Sean, how about you? Uh, well, I immediately thought of a, one of my favorite drive-in horror films from the early 70s <laughs> called Don't Look in the Basement. <laughs> it's a great, grim, dark movie about a, a young nurse who starts a new job at this very remote sanitarium where these just poor, sad people who are all fucked up in so many ways. And it's just like a grim sparse place when there's something weird going on in the in in this place and you don't don't want to give away what happens if you haven't seen it because there's something horrible in the basement that is a key to the twist in the film and it's great i mean it's it's one of those kind of movies that it's kind of hard to replicate that kind of vibe or style anymore it's kind of depressing but like in a really effective posture joyful way. way yeah it's 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 just really well done it's 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 great so if you haven't seen it Check it out. So great. Spoiler. They go in the basement. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it's pretty Don't good. Don't ruin anything for you guys. <laughs> Matt, yeah, that's what I thought immediately. Of, what do you think of basement? Well, initially I thought of Evil Dead too. Okay. But the second thing I thought of was a 2015 movie called We Are Still Here. Hmm. And it's a Barbara Crampton movie. Oh, Yay, Barbara and Crampton! Yeah, and it involves some people that move into a new home in New England, and there's some weird shit that's happening in this place. I don't want to get into the whole plot, but there is a scene that takes place in the basement, and there is a an apparition. I don't want to tell too much about what this thing is, but imagine like a burned corpse a walking burned corpse Ooh. just comes out of the wall kind of a thing and is just there and it's so spooky so scary wow and uh you know if i was cleaning my basement i would think that thing has to go <laughs> I'll, I'll sell the old life magazines and the boys life <laughs> get rid of the burn guy in the corner wow. 
Uh, it's, it's time to start afresh, you know. Yes. Got you. Nice. Wow. Okay. I'll check that out. Well, James, what did you think of when you thought of basement? Well, my go-to was uh, the basement of the Marston House in Salem's Lot, which is uh, booby-trapped ah. by Ooh. the vampire Barlow because he takes the staircase away. So anyone who goes into the or he goes halfway down the staircase and then falls and gets impaled by knives. Oh. That's a really nasty basement. So yeah. I like that. Although cool. the movie Nasty Basement is <laughs> is quite good. <laughs> That's a great concept. I saw it on is 42nd Street <laughs> back in the day. And, is, that, uh, is that genre? <laughs> it would have to be. It's my genre. <laughs> All nice. right. Well, Matt, why don't you give us a word? Now? <clears throat> All right. My word for you guys is mandibles <laughs> nice the password is mandibles 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 okay. all right first thing i'm not even mandibles. sure if this is right. okay, yeah i'm not even sure if this is right do we I, all know what mandibles are can you use I it as yeah. can you use it in a sentence this movie but you guys i know you guys can help me it's sure. the one where the the people are small and all the the animals that the, they they're like fighting ants and a crab and they're huge. What is that one called? Is it Land oh. of the Giant? Oh, are you thinking of uh, the Hammer film, The Lost Continent? I, I think don't that's think, a, I don't. Is that what the one you're thinking? Because uh, it sounds uh, to me like if you're talking crabs and like yeah, the people are yeah. small, right? Yeah, yeah, the people are small. So that okay. means, they're, but they're, all they're, the other stuff is like big. And so is this this is a movie, not a TV show? Uh movie. Movie. Well, I mean, the first thing I would think of would be like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, because that has yeah. a that people are small. This is older than that. This is older than uh, that. Like black this and movie. white. Black is it, and it's white. not like Food of the Gods or Empire? Oh no, no. Uh Technicolor. It's Technicolor. Technicolor. Incredible Technicolor. Shrinking Man. Uh, oh my god. Like, is this like um like like, no, like no, Dr. No, no. Cyclops? Oh, there you go. That's a good one. That's is there is there are there mandibles in that? Yeah, yeah, because the ant aren't ants. Well, no, I mean, yeah, Doctor well, Cyclops. There's I think a... there's like, isn't there a dog or a cat or something like that in that one? Yeah, but, well, like, I mean, I'm trying I to think mean, of the movie. Well, uh, yeah, them so has has giant ants. I mean, I well, save save really your choice. Done. Yeah, are are we going to go through every mandible? <laughs> now? I mean, we we yeah, will eventually. One of those ones that was on TV, like all the time that we would watch when we were kids and it was great huh. um yeah. and it's in technicolor okay well sure we'll think we'll think we'll about think, keep thinking about it as we go thinking about, about it we'll come yeah. back yes okay. okay so mandibles okay is it like in insect like thing in the that front? Is correct yes, yes. Right? Okay. Okay. It, it, so they the first, are also found on certain crustaceans. Yes. Like, crustaceans. Yes. Okay. So the first thing that popped into my mind was uh, Cronenberg's "The Fly" with Jeff Goldblum. Ooh, very at nice. The very at the end sequence when he goes through the teleportation thing and he comes he comes out and parts of him fall off and you see his little eyeballs. Yes. And yeah. These little mandible things and. And it's such a great film because, you know, it's a tragic love story. Ultimately, it is a tragic love story. And yes. Jeff Goldblum is so good. Gina Davis is so good. And I just love where it goes. There's some really creepy things in it. And I I, I love that film. I um, did groundbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the image of him as the fly, spoiler alert, sorry, uh, <laughs> at the end with his little man, well, that's what I thought of. I love nice. it. Nice. Okay. Nice. So, uh, Sean, uh, well, I immediately go to, as you were saying, Matt, it also includes a kind of crustacean type of creatures by I'm automatically thought of the predator. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Very, yeah. Great Ooh, choice. The most in, in, ingenious, uh, makeup design by Stan Winston. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes. Yeah. It's kind of like become iconic. I mean, it's, it's, it's so unique, scary and weird. And every time they make a predator movie, even if the movies themselves aren't great, there's always some nice, cool, slight variations or yes. additions to that look, but it's always that great, very alien-looking uh, design. That face when that when that mask comes oh, off in the, the first film, yeah, yes. yeah. First, the first film. film. I went in the theater not really expecting 
any of this. Like I, yeah, I didn't really yeah. know what this movie too. was. Yeah, yeah. And and so I'm enjoying it, but then when the mask comes off and you see this creature and those mandibles, and apparently I'm trying to remember who was the person who suggested the man it was Cam- it was james cameron. it was cameron it was cameron that's oh. right. yes because okay. that was not the original design right, of right. The, yes, creature. Right. the original design was like a complete failure it didn't work it was and yeah. the funny thing sean uh, matt i never thought the mask to me i thought that was going to be the creature through the whole thing i did not expect the mask yes. and just right, yeah, right. That, you realize it's a right the it's way like, the hands and the fingers come up to remove the mask yeah. Yeah. and the little air things psh- and then when the creature is exposed, oh my god! It was it was just it just raised it to another level. Yeah, I, it did. oh, brilliant, brilliant. Agreed. And then Gary Anna and I were talking earlier today. We about were the prey movie. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which uh, once again, you were talking about John that you know each movie will do a, a variation on the theme, mm-hmm. and I love mm-hmm. I loved what they did with that movie with the the prey yes movie. yeah yeah it's great. Really yeah, because cool. wasn't that mask mostly like bone, like made out of bones in that one? If I'm recalling, yeah, it had more of a. It had definitely more of a primitive kind of tribal. Yeah, thing. yes, it combined yeah. kind of with a technology. With a, yeah, yeah, that was very cool. It was, it was so good. <laughs> Great yep. stuff. It was like so it. good. I think it's the second best one. I like I, the original Predator is like so, it, yeah. so good. But yeah. uh, I, that's my second favorite one. Of the of all of those, it's cool. it's pretty incredible. It's pretty incredible. Hey, James, what do you think of when you hear mandibles? <sighs> Tarantula. Oh, the, the, okay. The second horror movie I ever saw. I was six years old. The first one was Dracula, the Todd Browning, which kind of put me to sleep. But then the co-feature was Tarantula, <laughs> and that woke me up because to think that a spider could actually, you know eat you <laughs> and you see the mouth coming down i mean that's true yeah. monster stuff yeah yeah and um yeah it, it was very impactful and uh it started me on uh monster movies so yeah cool wow. that's great nice. i didn't know this i didn't know that either and uh, it says everyone's gone right well we're still need to find out gariana's i i think it's title. them i think it's them i think it's sure because well, that was like let's go with them i'm <laughs> If I, I I will probably figure it out, but it was one that used to come on TV all the time. Them? Somebody's probably going to have it in the comments, and and it was these people on an island, and the, everything on the island was just giant. So Are they we were talking? Wait, 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 mysterious wait. island, mysterious, mysterious island with the giant crab. That's what we're giant talking crab. about because because them was not them was black and white. Yeah, fifties black what, and what white. Was it? What is what island? Mysterious, Mysterious Island, Island. Ray, Ray Harryhausen. Harryhausen movie. Yeah, stop and motion. So it's that there's a there. So there's a stop motion animated giant crab. There's mm-hmm. a uh, there. Yes, that's it. That's, a it. that's it. Giant yes, giant bee. Yes, and it's it's awesome because they they talk, Yeah, they yeah. push they you push the crab into a hot all pit. The time. Oh, that that yeah. movie was amazing. I love Harry Hudson, but that that movie is amazing. One of my favorites of his. Yeah, that's, yeah, one. that's one. Yeah. Of, that that was really. It used to just come on TV all the time, so we would I, yeah. watch that, and it was like, yeah, the crab, the crab coming out. It looks oh, delicious. Yeah, great, great. It does look delicious. Yeah, <laughs> it does. when they cook it, I was so jealous. I was I, like, see, Matt, see, that's the uh, funny thing when when the crab appears and everyone's all oh. My first thing in my mind is I'm not afraid of him. I'm like, oh, you look so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair, you know. Like, Running around the house in his underwear with butter. But they, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, but you know, there's really one meal that you get out of that thing because the next day when that thing is sitting on the beach, yeah, it's yeah. gonna kill everyone if they try okay. to go back for seconds. <laughs> Look, you bring up a very good point. So I need to make sure I eat a lot of crab that day. Yes. Yeah, so, no, gorge yourself. Have sure a little uh, alka seltzer ready. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, Matt, what do you think of when you hear the word mandibles? When I, when I was thinking of it, when I thought of mandibles, the first thing I thought of was them. Okay. Because, mm-hmm. because yeah, yeah. in that movie, first of all, it is it's one of those movies that I have more appreciation for all the time. Those effects still hold up. Yeah. I mean, this is a movie made in the 50s, and these giant ants, which are practical, 
but they are so effective. They're so scary. And I believe it's like the first time that you really see the ants. The first thing you see are the mandibles coming yeah, over the yeah. hill. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that is, that's just genius. So yeah, yeah that's I, what I was I, thinking I, of. I agree. Full size practical props that actually moved very well, had a lot of yeah. articulation. And, but also that was one of the first of the giant bug movies of the True. 50s. But unlike a lot of the later films, it just, you know, we're still fun. But that, the buildup, to build up is that because because nobody had seen anything like that before yeah. not like so the build up is so effective that it, yeah it's great great movie and an excellent script like a really yeah. adult yeah nice script i agree well that's nice. really nice that's that's a round so All that right. isn't that isn't that fun isn't that fun i, 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 I can't sort of... believe how deep you guys got <laughs> I, oh, I, 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 well, I, I forgot one the, the mandalorian Oh, oh, okay. oh never mind. All right. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. Well, there is a uh, there is I wish a, I wouldn't have laughed at that. There's a graphic <laughs> thank you, Gary. There is a graphic novel called The Elvis Mandible. Look it up. <laughs> really? Uh, no, from okay. okay. But anyway, no, for listeners at home, I hope you're enjoying this. So what do you say? We keep continue on. Go. Gary, you if you say so, word? Larry. <laughs> yes. I was gonna stop right here. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let's keep going. Garanda, do you have another word for us? I do. Uh my second word here is hellhounds. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. And All with right. what you guys did with my first word, interstate, I'm excited. For the potential of this one, let me tell you. Okay, well, okay. Again, the first thing that popped into my head. Okay. First thing. Okay, so when you said Hellhounds, the first thing that popped in my head was, I believe it's a uh, Rottweiler from Omen One, the the first oh, Omen good. film. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And look, mm-hmm. look, the weird the weird thing about it is, it's not like, oh, this is a a dog that's possessed by the devil. You don't actually know what you do know. It's it's an animal that is trained to protect the little boy. Okay. And so is the animal doing what it was trained to do, or is there something that's more power behind it to make it so vicious, you know? Um, but anyway, that's, that's the first thing that popped into my head. Perfect. Nice. Okay. Yeah, that's literally a, a dog guarding the gates of hell. Like, yeah. Yeah. That, right. yeah. That is. Yeah. Yeah. The, Webster Sean? definition. Sean? Uh, well, I immediately went to the terror dogs in Ghostbusters. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I yeah. Love, love those those creatures. Really cool design. Great, great design. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Love them. James? Um, well, I immediately went to the Cerebus, which is a Greek mythological three-headed dog, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. which I believe was also incorporated in the Harry Potter series. He was. Yes. Yes. And in Clash of the Titans. Right. Although, although that was just a two-headed dog, not a That's three-headed true. dog. But and, definitely an and, homage to Cerebus. You got, yeah, you, but you yeah. know, the thing that gets me is, so we all heard the story about when Harry Housen was doing It Came From Beneath the Sea, the octopus wasn't really an octopus because it would take too much time to animate eight legs. So he has right. six. And the and what you think are the other legs are beneath the water, but he only did right. six. Right. So here you have this terror dog in in clash of titans and i expected to see three heads and again eh, you only see two because well who's gonna know that i can see harry housing going <laughs> well who's gonna know the difference two heads three heads it's, it's a two-headed dog you know that's what i and i i wanted three i like heads, your impression so. i do well, that's how we talked i remember I like it. Always, no it's good it's true. It's, it's when fun. i when i Yes, when i saw him at at the, uh, my first convention that i went to that he was there he kind of came off as you know, you know he wasn't getting money for these films that were being re-released on DVD right. yeah. and that kind of thing. And you could feel like there was a little bit of bitterness yeah, bitter. or anger. And, <laughs> you know, and when he talked about, oh, you know, when he was talking about the octopus, well, it was easier to animate six legs instead of eight, you know? So I figured the dog was the same thing, but anyway. Okay. That's a great one. I, mine was the, uh, I also, the Ghostbusters one. Okay. Was, I immediately, but my second one that I thought of was that, uh, I don't know if you guys, the 
the amazing Dovermans, the ones where they train the dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've talked yes. about doing an episode of just oh, Doberman dog. Yeah, yeah, because yes. Dovermans are like a big thing in the 70s at some yeah. point. There was like, Wait, it was the Doberman actual, mania. Was yeah. it the Doberman? You definitely need to do an episode on that. But that was the the second one. My first one was the, the Ghostbusters. But that's a great movie if uh, people haven't seen it. The amazing, oh, yeah. that's worth hunting down. It's hilarious. For me, I also thought of the Ghostbusters dogs originally. But the second thing I thought of, which really should have been my first, is the 1978 TV movie Devil Dog, The Hound from Hell. Oh, <laughs> yes. Which, yes. which awesome. by the way, stars a friend of the show, Ike Eisenman. Yay. That's right. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. That's a great film, too. Yeah. And oh I don't think gosh. I really need to tell you what this is about. <laughs> yeah. It's a suburban family who meet a double dog who turns out to be a hound from hell. What are the odds? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Good times. Nice. Nice. Okay. Oh, those were some good. Those are some good yeah. ones there. Yeah. All right. So here's my word. My second word is electrodes. Electro. Electrodes. Oh, electrodes. Wow. Good one. That's a if good this word. This can be both horror, sci fi. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but electrodes. The first thing that popped into my mind was uh, Frankenstein. Yep. You know, no. yep. Yeah. You know, doing yeah. with the, those in the, the background. The, in the background. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, they, uh, yeah, they. Uh, it, hooked up to the to those nods on his head right yeah. don't they hook it up and that fire engine outside the end of fire <laughs> engine. Uh, and they also used all that stuff didn't they use it in young, young frankenstein Frank? yeah. Young well? yeah yes yeah the they Kenneth, used all Kenneth that same Kenneth equipment but Madden. frankenstein yeah. is where i just beautiful, like the Tesla coils and stuff. Just mm-hmm. going oh, yeah, on. yeah, yes. yeah, it's iconic, it's mm-hmm. amazing effect, and just look beautiful on film. Mm-hmm. John, well, I also thought of Frankenstein, but a specific Frankenstein film, and I don't know why I went to this one, but I think because it's one of the most memorable moments that involve, for me at least, that involve electrodes with the Frankenstein monster, and that's. Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein mm. because oh, it's, yes. it's it's yes. the way Bill Lugosi as Dracula. Part of the way he helps to revive the monster is he has his Dracula ring, and he kind of holds it to each electrode, and you see like a little electricity go into, in the right side and the, and the left side. It's like it's just this unique kind of thing, like a, a clever idea. Like so, Dracula just has this kind of like supernatural electrical power i guess stored up in his ring he has power in his ring that he can charge the monsters um electrodes with it i think that's really cool and there's just a great shot it's just, it's just burned in my memory that moment it's like wow that's cool it's almost the type of thing that maybe in the future they would sell at a gas station <laughs> like, is your frankenstein monster on yeah. The Fritz? <laughs> yeah yeah pick up one of these and start mm. them up and be on your way yeah, it's just a really interesting idea because they like, like when they were writing it, like, hey, well, how can Dracula kind of help to like revive the monster? Like, yeah, it's a great idea. It's, it works. Very good. Nice. So well, I went to um I went I went to actually to two movies where the uh the the monsters are both the products of electrocution, uh, mm-hmm. but are still walking around. One of them is man made monster with Lon Chaney from the nineteen yeah, forties. Yes. Yeah, that's a fun one. And the other one was from the 80s, and it's called The Horror Show with Brian James, oh, where yeah. he, he, plays, a, he yeah. plays an unrepentant convict on death row who gets the chair, but it doesn't kill him. Instead, it makes him stronger, and he runs around killing people. Yeah, that's with Lance Hendrickson, I think, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You, you can also throw Shocker in there, too. Yeah, yeah, Wes yeah. Wes Craven, They're Shocker. Both, that'd be, ah, yeah. Shocker. <laughs> wow. Nice. I haven't thought about that movie in forever. <laughs> I thought of it. But then Sean mentioned it. Uh, so sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. No, no, no. I didn't no, think no, no. Yeah. Think That's fine. He likes so he why 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 you name a bunch of titles. Oh, it's more <laughs> electro oh, movies. He, he, yeah. He has difficulty <laughs> playing by the rules, you know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, I do. Well, no, I mean, look, of course, the first thing I think most of us thought of was Frankenstein. That's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah that one was kind of obvious, but it really did. It was the first thing. 
Yeah, but I, and I oh. love that. But uh, I thought of a few. One of them was Shocker. But then the next one down was Electro from the Spider-Man movies. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yep. It was kind Absolutely. of like a human Jamie Electro. Fox? Is that Jamie Foxx playing that? That is Jamie Foxx, yes. Yes, okay. that's right. Okay. That's right. And I liked him best in the, uh, what was the one where they had all the people from all the yeah. other movies? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No Way Home. No, no Way Home. No, that, no Way Home, right. Yeah. It, yeah. it was so fun to see all three of them. I thought that was yeah. so, I thought yeah. it was very clever. It's a ridiculous, it's, it's, a, it's a ridiculous movie, but I, I did yeah. enjoy those scenes. Yeah. 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 And, and Electro, Electro yeah. yeah, Electro, because his character is from the other Spider-Man franchise, which is not yeah. as good. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> right. right. Amazing <laughs> Spider-Man. But yeah. still, I, yeah. I have to admit, it's really cool. It was really neat and pleasant. It was to cool. See. Yes. I didn't know how how are you going to get all three Spider Man actors together, and then yeah. all of those villains. That might I mean I was thinking from a producer's point of view, just like the paperwork would just be oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> but it's but it was so I loved great. all of it. it I it loved was, all of it, but I wanted it in a different movie because right, right, right. the movie is I, terrible. But, I the, but those it. scenes are fun. great. I had fun with it. So, so yes, electrodes. The first thing that I thought of it too is Frankenstein, but also Bride of Frankenstein. My daughter and oh, I were yeah, having yeah. a discussion recently about Bride of Frankenstein. She's thinking about doing a cosplay as the Bride of Frankenstein oh, with the hairstyle. Right. Right. Cool. And it was brought up. It's interesting when the Frankenstein's monster, Sean, when he's <laughs> lying on the slab and, you know, after all, all the electricity, you know, he gets and removes his little hand and stuff. But his hair, it's kind of greasy and straight. But. The bride of Frankenstein's hair. Oh my God. It's like made her <laughs> shockingly, you know, like standing up. And I thought, wouldn't it have been interesting if the Frankenstein monster played by Carl had a different hairstyle? Like his <laughs> hair was standing straight up. I just thought it'd be interesting. But yes, anyway, Bride of Frankenstein is what I thought of That's because my, my daughter and I were talking about it. So very good. Nice. There's your word electrodes. Sean, Works why don't you me. get the word? Okay. The word is sticky. <laughs> Ooh, sticky. Yeah. sticky. Ooh, sticky. Sticky. <laughs> sticky. It's the very stuff. sticky. What year was the stuff out? Stuff. Oh, that's what yes. The stuff was sticky. Eighties, I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Especially that, if that, you that. leave the stuff out in the sun for a while, then very sticky. <laughs> very, yeah. very sticky. That's okay. that would be the first thing I I okay. thought of. I like that. that. I don't nice. know what year that came out, but man, that's a. That that's movie holds movie. up surprisingly it does. well. Yes. I think that's another one that, for me, gets better every time I watch it. Yeah, uh, sure. You're talking about the stuff. The stuff. Yes. Larry Cohen. Larry Cohen. Yep. Larry Larry Cohen. Cohen. And, 1985. Of and, of course, we have to bring up Sean's, Sean's prop. Sean's prop that he owns. I, I do have I have a, a, a quart prop of this of the stuff, the, the container that it comes in. Uh, Larry Cohen was selling them at a Monster Palooza. So, I so I got no to, to sign, really? sign one. Yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's great. Wow. Right. That's incredible. That's okay. incredible. Okay. This might be, seem like it's kind of out of left field, but you okay. know how w w when you have like a, a, a plastic shower mat in the bathtub or something, you pull it up and it goes pop, 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 you know, yeah, little, little suckers. Yep. So the first thing I thought of when you said sticky, it took a moment, but then it popped in my head. It's, the giant squid from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea from Ooh. 1954. And the okay. reason why they is stick. Yeah. the squid has these giant arms that grabs a hold of you and it has all those sticky things. Now, in other films, I don't know if you see it as much, but in that film, when the squid releases a guy, you can see that he had the sucker marks all over his face. Mm -hmm. It's when Kirk Douglas comes up, hey, man, you okay or whatever? And the guy has all the suckers all over because the, the squid used his sticky hand with the little suckers and grabbed him and threw him in there. Into like the that. little <laughs> So that's what I thought of when I heard sticky. So, oh, wow. Okay. James? Nice. Where my mind went was Alien from 1979, mm. uh, because there are it's more than one scene, I think, where the residue of the alien uh, leaves behind a sticky mess. And also when the android uh, in home 
uh, what was his name? In the a- Ash. 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 Yeah. He leaves behind a sticky mess too. <laughs> so there's a lot of sticky mess residue in Alien. So sure. I, my yeah. mind went there. Well, so it's a lot to clean up after that. Is, movie. Well, yeah. it's the alien. Is his residue? Is it more like like a KY jelly kind of a thing? It's not really. Kind of. Kind of very but all, like a lubricant yeah. kind of a thing. But it it feels sticky. There's something. But, about and it also. Yes, and when the when the um, chestburster evolves, remember um, Harry Dean Stanton finds the the skin of it because it yes. obviously grew yeah. out of that, and yes. that was pretty sticky looking. So yeah. yes, yeah, and he that's... smells it too. It's probably smelly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well that's where I went. Okay, Matt. Well, the first thing I thought of was naked lunch. Oh, oh yeah. because yeah, you got yeah, the yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. the uh, the mugwumps. And they right. have that goo that comes out of them. Oh uh, yeah. And then that just in general, was... everything felt sticky. To yeah, me. that whole movie was sticky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that movie was sticky. I could have called it sticky lunch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> could have called and... it sticky lunch. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. No, that was a, a nice poll, Matt. Nice poll. Yeah, <laughs> I love that one, and it always reminds me too. Just as it's just a little bit off the subject, but uh, I remember watching that film with Dana Gould. <laughs> I love it. You've told this story. I love it. And <laughs> uh, remember when Roy Scheider makes a, a surprise appearance, let's just say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dana said out loud in the theater, just goes to show you inside of every beautiful woman, there's Roy Scheider. <laughs> <laughs> did, I get a, nice. did, I get, did I get a laugh or was it an empty theater? <laughs> you know, three, three chuckles and we all laughed. And okay. Right, right. right. Did you guys feel like when you saw the film, you just had at the end, you had to get up and just wash your hands in the in the bathroom? Oh, I yeah. Mean, I mean, it's like it's not coming off. <laughs> but you know what, though? Those movies, those kind of movies, as I got older and older, like I would say, like right about my late 20s is when I was hoping every movie was going to be like that. <laughs> like, right. I, I fucking I like I love Cronenberg and I yeah, love. Yeah. Anything like that. We were talking about Alien and From Beyond and anything that had stickiness and like <laughs> bladders and right. I, just I love it. It's like yeah. comfort food. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, uh, when I thought of the word, I was uh, the first thing I went to was the blob. Oh, oh, God. oh yeah. Which, sure. you know, very yeah. sticky. Both both that's the, the, stickiest. Yeah, the original or the remake. I think that's a definitely a right. sticky one of the most stickiest monsters in yes. the film. So I love sure. the remake. You Me too. You know, it's you're really good. You are messed up. If even a little bit of it gets on you, you it's like yeah. you can't yeah. get that off. Yeah. Like, like yeah. gum or something. You can't get that off. It's, it is the mm. worst. It's a yeah. kind of a really primal kind of fear. That it's you know, it's really yeah, it's it's really effective. Well, so, like, have you guys ever like when you you got like a, a let's say a, a picture frame or something, and it has the price tag stuck on the glass, and you're trying to get it oh, off? Right, and, right. And, and, you know, I, I am, okay. I am, I am obsessed. I'm like obsessive compulsive about getting. There's this stuff called Goo Gone. Yes, yes. Yeah. I have oh yeah. I, I, I use it on everything. It's just I love it. Stuff. I love that. Stuff. If there's so. there's the teeniest remnant of a sticker left on something. It has oh, to be I, gone. I'm, be I'm, gone. I'm so with you. And what I, salads, and I, aspen, <laughs> yeah. 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 But it's, it, it's like you know, even the stickiest price sticker is it right. can't overcome the blob. If the blob touches yes. you, it's like yeah. you're do- just you're cut done. your freaking hand off or yeah. whatever. It yeah, is. exactly. So exactly. That's a good there one, Sean. Yeah, Sticky. Right. In, in the the blob, the remake, uh, the projectionist gets killed. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, and, been, and in the original, uh, we don't like projection. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You would and assume that he. Is, yes. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. no way he could survive that. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, right. there's quite a few films where projectionists get. Yeah. See, now that I think absolutely. About uh, the one time the Stern family showed like a week of them, and I'm like, what are you guys trying to tell me here? What? Not Dead End Drive In. That's a fun movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. There's a fun Columbo episode. That's right. Where something happens to a projectionist. Remember yeah. that, Sean? Yeah. yeah that's a great one. fun Columbo episodes. That's true. <laughs> there's there's that's true. one, there is one Columbo episode that also involves a projector. It I, I know, I know why you don't like I don't, it. Just I just cannot. don't I don't like it. I I, yeah. I find it uh I don't believe it. I think it's oh. unbelievable. The, the ending I think is 
stupid and absurd. <gasps> and uh, it's, it's, it's the Janet Lee episode, right? The Janet Lee one. <clears throat> yeah. what, you I don't like anything about episode? it. I don't like the musical parts of it. I don't like any of it. That's so interesting. Fun. Yeah, you know what? Because Matt doesn't like musicals. That's no, crazy. I do like musicals. <laughs> oh, I like oh, good really? musicals. Oh, really? The, I like that. That's a but look. One. I'm not. Um, I'm not. Look. If it works for you, look, it I love Columbo. And and when Columbo's on, you know, it's just I will enjoy just watching him. But that yeah. episode is is so absurd. It doesn't <laughs> make just, a, one lick of sense. No. Nope, nope. Now, now, now nope. I got to watch it again, though. To nope. see how it does I, not make I, any sense. I, Columbo, not in a million years would he have done what he did. I disagree. <laughs> I disagree. But we'll save this for our Columbo episode. We should do a Columbo episode. So, so, so James, yeah. James, why don't you give us a word now? Okay, going back to uh, late great O.J. Simpson. Oh. <laughs> um, juice. The word is juice. Ah. Are you serious? What? what serious. Juice? Juice. Juice. Not oh. juice. 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 As in orange juice or apple juice. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I gotcha. All right, this is stupid. No, I, I'm not- no, 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 no. Just, no, the way okay. the game okay. is played, you say a word, and what's the first thing that pops into your head? So I got it. Okay. 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 If you go first, then. Yes, I am. The first <laughs> thing that popped into my head was the commercial for Tang. Tang, the <laughs> breakfast drink. Which was orange, and I remember watching this as a kid. You know, you take a little spoonful of this orange powder and pour it in this water, and you make special juice that the astronauts drink. And I'm like, "Ooh, I gotta get some of that!" And of course, <laughs> living in a family with seven kids, you know, we're all like, "If my mom got one container, it would be gone in a day." And of course, we would all be <laughs> adding like two scoops of it to put into our water so you can make it like a really sugar. Of course. Yeah. I mean, you know, and then my parents would get upset and it made messes. It would stain stuff. And it's tang. awful. It, it, mm-hmm. Well, I, so tang juice. I love the commercial. I love, I want to drink what the astronauts drink, you know, but, but, but do you, that's what, <laughs> yes, as a kid, yes. As, as a little kid, I would, I would eat spoonfuls, just the powder from the, no, yeah. are you, Good did you do God. that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you are, I would always mix it with the, I did what the instructions I did that did. too, but I, I just did eat it oh. from the can. Yeah. Oh my um, God. When, when, you know, intruders would enter our home, I would just throw it in their eyes. That's okay. What I would use it for. <laughs> so look, I'm sorry, James, it may be stupid, but Tang. No, that's, no. That's I thought of that too. You know, you know. Juice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, Gariana, did, did you, ha- what did you Don't think be of? a menace while drinking your juice in the hood. <laughs> 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 Little side note. Nice. There are only two prints of that that exist. Is that that are right? What? Wow. What happened? One Why? of them, one of, the, you know, a lot of them just didn't, they, they got played so much and they didn't do well. Oh. So they didn't make, more print. Oh. It's the same problem we're having now with digital. Mm. If you have film, you can play anything in the history of cinema. You can put it up. The yeah, new right. stuff, the new stuff is being played only digitally. That's but true. if you, you want to go back, a lot of the films that we've talked about today, those haven't it's called DCP when they put it in a uh, it stands for a digital cinema package. A lot of the stuff that we've talked about, of course, Ghostbusters has been put on a DCP, but most everything we've talked about, and they'll probably never get around because there's not money in it, and that's all they care about. Right, yeah. So, like, if they do the stuff, which is a great film, I think we can all agree upon that, they don't have it. There's not enough money. Right. So you have to have a print. So there's a lot of stuff that gets shown, but they're starting to realize that now. Yeah, like, I yeah, mean, that's yeah. the big advantage places like the Cine family had where they could do everything, 16 millimeter, 35 millimeter, digital, right. uh, Blu-ray, DVD, everything. They could play stuff off USB. We played wow. the Rolling Stones Cocksucker Blues one time. Wow. Well, that's amazing. And we played that off a of usb they could do everything that's wow. really smart it's incredibly smart with 
Quentin is doing over at uh, the yeah. New Beverly. Right. Because he play everything in the history of cinema. Mm. And he owns almost everything that he plays. So he's got a bunch of stuff that there's one of. There's wow, only wow. that that print. But in, in, well, <laughs> God bless him. You know, it's yeah, like yeah. I, I thank God for people like that. Thank yeah. God for people like that. Yeah, because I know stuff like that stuff does deserve to be like um ah oh, we showed so many amazing amazing films over there. But we he shows stuff like a lot of uh, Burt Reynolds stuff, which I loved. Me too. And you mm. might, I mean, Smokey and the Bandit might be on DCP. I'm not sure, but Gator isn't. Gator's amazing. Gator. Yeah, amazing. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, his, his early Incredible 70s move. action movies, and, yeah. So that's why it, I, I, that, that's why I feel like, not to go off on a tangent, but film is so important. But this one I just mentioned, there's two prints. Wow. You, you know, like yeah. that's and it. I'm sorry, Garana. What and what's the name of this film again? Don't be a menace while drinking your juice in the hood. Don't be a menace a while drinking your yeah, juice in the hood. It's all Wayne, the, it's Wayne uh, Brothers. It's Wayne yeah, yeah. Brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a funny film. If you guys haven't seen it, it make a good double bill with "I'm Gonna Get You, Sucker." Yes, yeah, it yes, it would. That would be an excellent uh, or Black Dynamite. Yeah. Oh, love black dynamite so his good. new one have you seen his new western no uh uh-uh. johnny outlaw black very good it's cool. very good from last year 2023 if you guys missed that one it, it, it's a lot of fun I, I love that kind of stuff so getting back to the word juice sean want to give us a juice one thing that came to me was escape from the planet of the apes when Zira oh. is giving, when Zira is giving Good. basically wine or alcohol, and she doesn't know what it is, and uh, she's told that it's grape juice plus. That was, yeah. was champagne. Champagne, yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of like what is this? Kind of like grape juice plus. I love that. That's and great. of course, she gets that tipsy is. drinking it. So uh, yeah, that's why I thought. Why I thought juice. Nice. Nice. Very good. Yeah, huh? man. Love it. Matt. Love it. Well, when I think of juice, I think of Star Trek. Ah, because okay. oh. especially the original Star Trek, the original right. series, because almost everything, especially any kind of liquor, always looked like fruit juice. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> it, looked, it looked delicious. Like yeah, everything yeah. looked like, you know, as a as a girl drinker like I am, that's for me, you know, and the only thing missing was tiny space umbrellas. <laughs> oh, maybe, with right, a, right. maybe with a, a, you know, a little light up stem. Oh, like no, the Blade like Runner. That. Yeah, yeah, little, yeah hey, I like that. that there That's, you go. There's yeah. talk about a memorabilia item for yeah. your drink: a little mini Blade Runner umbrella. So essentially, nice. Star Trek was like a tiki bar, is what yes. you're saying. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. Space. And usually, these different kind of liqueurs were served in like. Instead of a, a regular glass, it'd be like in a weird square glass <laughs> yeah. made of yeah. plexiglass, you know, or triangle or something. Right? Yeah, yeah something yeah. weird like that. But yeah, that's yeah. what so I think cool. of. Oh, that's, that's awesome. awesome, James. Like what it. do you think of when you? Well, I, I, had a, I had a couple of things: Violet Beauregard and Willy Wonka, where she turns into the giant blueberry, <laughs> and then she has to be <laughs> juiced. Yes, that's right. <laughs> oh, and then in the original. In the original King Kong versus Godzilla, they have these giant <gasps> berries on the island right. that they have oh, to make. Right. He, Very the good. Juice makes Kong fall asleep. So that, that's where I went. Wow. Yeah. Oh, oh nice. nice. Incredible. Nice. That's where our heads go. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> wow. so good. That's awesome. Yeah, that really was. All right. Matt, what's your word? Well, I think I'm going to piggyback on what Sean gave us. And. Yeah. He gave you sticky. He did. I am going to give you <laughs> dripping. Ooh. Ooh. Dripping. 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 Something that would drip. <laughs> that, I don't know why. Something pertaining it, to a dripping quality. Indiana Jones popped into my head, but I don't know wh- why. Like I, I think a lot I know. of dripping in like the movies. fire I dripping think I know. the wall when they. Well, 
the uh, melting scene. Again, yeah. another yeah. one of There's my favorites. One of the great yeah. melting scenes. One of the I, greatest I... melting scenes ever. And True. when I was watching it, I was thinking like, that is going to ruin that rug, whatever they're standing on. <laughs> You're never going to get that out. <laughs> a mixture of blood and flesh. That's and, not coming out. Yeah, no. You could have called that Indiana much, Jones, and that's not coming that's out. That's not coming out, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, Never right. gonna get that out. You're, there's no amount of goo be gone that is gonna <laughs> get that out. <laughs> no, no, that's there. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's great. That, that's that, perfect. That, I like that, that. That is what popped into my head. That uh, totally in, works. I love the new one too. By the way, I thought Me it too. was very. Good. I loved it. I one of my I, favorites, actually. It was so good. Yeah. Nobody talked about it. Not enough pretend. dripping, though. Uh, no. None. <laughs> Not Zero. nearly enough dripping. Mm-mm. All right. Who's Mm-mm. next? I guess I am. Um, Yay. Um, I'm sorry. This one, it's so funny. I was trying to picture something, and th- it's this is kind of dumb because we've already kind of talked about it, but it's the scene in the 1979 Alien yeah. when yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. when Harry Dean Stanton? Yes, and he goes into the area where there's the dripping water, and he looks yeah. up, and he takes his oh. head off, and he puts his face up, and he lets the water yeah. drip. It's yeah, very warm in that area. At least that's the implication. Yeah, but I do remember, you know, seeing that film with my dad, and at that moment, I remember thinking, "Don't take your hat off. What do you do? No, don't do the, <laughs> the thing. It's gonna be up. There. You know, I'm just, you know, it's like." Don't open the door to the dark closet. Don't go in the dark closet, you know. And it's like, don't go in this dark area. But it's that dripping sequence of water. That's great. That's perfect. Film. It wasn't what I was yeah. thinking too. Yeah, but but it's like yeah. I wanted to bring up something that we haven't talked about. But it's like again, no, but it, when you when but, you say the word, yeah, yeah, you know, like, you, I can't help but when the first thing, and I was going, oh, don't go there. Think of a blood thing, or we, and I, and I, this is the first thing that so much in. dripping in that movie. I mean, there's you know, a lot the of dripping yeah, from yeah. the mouth. You've got the dripping of the rain, yes, the, yes. the water, and yes. uh, you got the dripping of the acid. And I like, yes. yeah, I always think of like the, you know, don't get it on you. You know, I was trying yeah, to go I for like a minimal dripping, but there's more dripping. Okay. That, so it's a, lot, anyway. it's a good dripping movie. There you sure. go, Matt. It's the best I can. I, I like it. I think it's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sean. Okay. Well, what came to mind? And this is. Yeah, this just came to me, and it's only like a couple drops, maybe even one drop, but I believe it's 28 Days Later. The oh, guy, yeah. oh, that's great. Oh, I love like, that. It's, it's great. The, I love it, there's that. like an infected guy cro- hanging above, right? Yeah. And he's, yeah. And the character and he's looks up. bleeding, and he looks up, and it's just a drip, drip goes into his eye. And he and immediately, because it. It, that, because it takes effect in that movie, it, like the effect is almost immediate. Yeah. Almost. So just talk about a bad timing and just bad place <laughs> yeah. the wrong time. He just looks up and that drop goes in his eye and he's infected. It's like, that's, but that's he, it. But what's the scary thing about that is he realizes it's gone in his eye and he yeah. knows he has a like maybe seconds. A, some seconds yeah. to say something or to do something. Yeah. And it's a, a heartbreaking yeah. scene because yeah. you love that character. I love that character. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that is effective. a great, that is a great drip. That is a great drip. <laughs> yeah, Sean. Good drip. Love it. Perfect. There you go. Well, if you can count maggots, um, <laughs> the scene that comes to mind for me is from Suspiria. Uh, oh, Dario nice. Argento, oh, nice. 1977, yeah, where yes. maggots are literally dripping from the ceiling. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, raining yeah. maggots. Yep. It's, it's raining, raining maggots. maggots. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, uh, when I thought of this, the thing that I thought of immediately was the 1971 British anthology film, The House That Drip Blood from Amicus. Ah, oh. ah yes. Look. Spoiler alert, the house doesn't exactly drip blood. (laughs) But just the image that that puts in your head when you hear that title, I just picture a house just all of a sudden just bleeding all over the place. (laughs) Yes. Has that ever been done? I can't think right off the top of my head. I know that there have been movies where somehow the wall bleeds or something. Yeah, well, like, Am- Amityville. Amityville. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, like, right. but the whole house having that happen where it's just like, yeah, yeah everywhere. Cool. Well, everywhere you look. With the, the shining kind of, yeah. 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 But, but uh, yeah. that's good. So I want to, I, like I want a house that drips blood. 
<laughs> wow. So that's a wonderful second round. All right. Okay. So now we're back in a third round. So, Ooh. yeah. Gariana, why don't you give us another one? Pirate. Pirate. Ooh. Pirate. Okay. Pirate. Pirate. Arr. Now that I've done it, I think that this one might be a little obvious for everybody, but it's one of the words I came up with. Okay. okay. No, that's a good one. That's Again, a good one. Okay. Gariana, this may be kind of stupid, and I'm sorry. Stop but apologizing. I'm I'm so, well, <laughs> when I say this, you're gonna understand. I was one of those people that went to see every movie that came out in the 80s because I worked at a movie theater and I remember seeing the film Ice Pirates. And that was <laughs> that's great. That's great. Yeah, that's great. That's and great. there's a sequence with like a, the the space herpy or something, but it's like when it, I heard pirate. I was wanted to go one area, but the little ice pirates came into my mind. And it's 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 a comedy. It's not exactly like su- it's okay. I don't look, I don't know if it's necessarily as successful. Like like um what I, I, uh, what are you why are you apologizing? Yeah, why are you embarrassed to, that's to be like perfect? <laughs> that's because I, no, because I expected yeah, it's really Sean good. To, I expected Sean to go, Larry, that's a stupid movie. What do you and think? I, I have it. Why would Sean it's ever like, do it's that? A fun movie. Yeah. Well, I think I've said in the past how much I like that movie, actually. Okay. Yes. Well, yes. I, I okay. It's well, ridiculous, I, yeah, but I, it's fun. Yes, it's ridiculous. I like it. That movie Bruce Valanche in it. Yeah, yeah. And that movie made me fall in love with Mary Crosby because she is so lovingly photographed in that movie. Yeah, it's she's like, great in that. My God. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why'd yeah, you have to totally say fun. Mary Crosby? Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Ice Pirates. There. Okay. Sean? Better, I think Ice Pirates is better than it has a right to be. I, I agree. Yes. I agree. Yeah. Yes. It's worth revisiting. I yes. still like really both. Sean, really Sean. Yes. Really going to recommend to our listeners. Hey, yes. visit that. Yeah. Are you kidding? Of course. For what it is? Why not? Watch, just watch. It's fun. It's very, yeah, bree- yeah. very breezy yeah. and never takes itself seriously. Obviously, and it's it's a it's, it's a popcorn movie. Yeah, Put that, get that one with the uh, Space Hunter. Yes. Yeah. Adventure, yeah. Adventures Galax- in the Galaxy. Yeah. 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 All yeah. of that. Yeah. Perfect. That, that's a fun yeah. festival or, right there. Or like space balls. That's kind of like there's like space balls and yeah. ice pirates. It's so. a little, yeah. a little. Yeah. It's for a, some reason it doesn't fit with those because there's yeah. a, there's a slight connection to being a tad more serious, whereas space balls is a just a blatant parody. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I agree. <clears throat> okay. There you go. Well, Sean, why don't you give us a pirate? Well, I mean, it's maybe obvious, but I went to Pirates of the Caribbean. Those movies. That's familiar. And really, film. I think I felt, yeah, thing is, though, I'm not even that huge fan of those movies. I mean, I, I, I think I've seen, I mean, I like the first one. I, like the first I did one. like the first one a lot. I think I've seen the second one. But to be honest, I don't know if I saw any of the ones after that. And I don't even know how many are made after that. But I, I love but, uh, the ride. I, I'm obsessed with the ride. Ride's great. Yeah, yeah. Ride, yeah. But yeah. but that's that obviously came to mind. And, and the first one is a great film, I think. It's really yeah. enjoyable. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. There you go. Okay. Pirates of the Caribbean. James. I went to the island from 1980, which is a really ah. bad <laughs> movie. Ah. Uh, okay, from, yeah. from a um, a book by the author of Jaws, Peter Benchley, and right, it's right. just, I mean, you know, it's present day, but there's this uncharted island that pirates have taken over, and every time a little boat goes near, the pirates attack the boat, and it's just a cheesy bad movie from 1980 that bombed. But I mean, Michael Caine is in it, and it does have some entertainment value uh, i revisited it a few years ago and it's actually not as painful as it was in 1980 whatever that's right, i guess right. like like ice pirates so well it's yeah. funny that we it's funny that we're just talking about ice pirates how that movie just doesn't, doesn't take itself seriously the island is the exact opposite it, it yeah. really takes itself so so but it's oh. but now now you watch it it's kind of it's yeah it's so over the top and histrionic and just yeah. hammers you over the head with it's <laughs> it's it is it's ridiculous it's very violent at times yeah. but now i could see probably enjoying it more because for its kind of unintentional camp value, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Matt? Matt? Well, I'm surprised that Larry didn't go here. I I will put up the 1953 Disney classic, Peter Pan. Sure. Ah. Sure. I love Peter Pan. Of course, we all know that there are several parts of it that are problematic at best. Right. Sure. But I think it is a really well done movie. Captain Hook, one of the most iconic pirates, I think, yep. out there. Mm-hmm. 
Of course, later the movie Hook was made, which is right. yes, not right. quite as delightful. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> but I, I love Peter Pan, and I love uh, what I really love is the ride at Disneyland. Oh, of the of the yes. original, you know those original Fantasyland rides. Yes, yes. that yes. has to be, I think, my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, you're in a ship. You're in a mini ship going yes. through the ride, and then at one point, you're flying over London and the yes. island, and it and it yes. just the way that they design that whole ride, I just think is genius. Yeah. Classic yeah. dark ride where you go into an environment that is literally painted black yes. and then everything yeah. is lit up with like black light. And so when you have all those colors mixed with the black and you see the clouds fly yeah. in front of you and stars, you're passing yes. by stars. Yeah. Mm. It's in on one hand, it's a very simplistic way yeah. that they do it. But on the other hand, talk about a ride that's so magical as yeah. a kid and Matt, like you, you know, I love going on that ride and taking my daughter on that ride for the first time was like one of the most magical yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. And it was, oh, yeah. it was, could, it was I the, the fir- it was, it was the first ride we went on, and yeah. we stood in line. Yeah, when I took Kathy, that was the first ride we went on. And of course, we have to go on it again. You know, yeah. <laughs> so, it transports you. It really does. It, yeah, it really does. It's, and and it's, I will also say too, to give you an idea of the popularity of that, if you don't go to Disneyland a lot. When you go into Fantasyland and you go to that little area where there are all the the original rides, so you have like uh, Snow White, Snow White, Mr. Toad, Mr. Toad, Toad yeah. yeah. A lot of those rides, the line isn't very long, <laughs> but but Peter Pan, there's always a line. Yes. Yeah, which also shows you how effect. I mean, especially today with the advancement in rides at Disneyland. Yes. I, I mean, yeah. just to still, but that one still is really special, you know, yeah. and it's, it's it, great. It's as close to the original design as possible. I, I understand that they've modified it in such a way that the ships move a little quicker sure, or sure. whatever, but the basic concept is still yes. the same yes. from the 1950s. Right. Yeah. So Which is awesome. Yeah. Okay. That's a, the, you know, I mean, that's a great one. Pirate and Matt. Great. That's such a great one. Nicely yeah. done. Nicely done. Okay. Oh, it's my turn. <laughs> okay. So the word is cave. Cave. Okay. Cave. A cave. What do you, a cave? What do you think of when you hear the word cave? Cave. Hmm. Cave. As a, like as, a as in like cave. A, like in like a tunnel cave. Yes, you know, right. Yes. Or a cave. <laughs> long dark. Yeah. Where yes, a cave. So we're talking about caves. Yes. <laughs> I thought that was a good word. Uh, I think it's yeah, a great it word. It's a great word. Stop it's apologizing word. for the I'm, things I'm, that you're I, pitching I, here. I, I get all, a it's all you're, gold. You're criticizing my choice how, of word. How, how am I criticizing? Oh. I we did a whole episode sure. on caves. Yes, yeah, we that's did. Right. That's yes, right. yes, yes, we did. Yes, we yeah. did, sir. And now we're going to do uh, another one. Okay. No, <laughs> no. I want to know, look, because this is psychological. It's like, what do you think okay. of what comes to you when you hear the word cave? All right. Okay, I got it. Dariana? Go, go, Matt. Go, Matt. Come back no, to no, me. No, we'll, no, we'll, <laughs> we're going to go to Sean. We're going to go to Sean. Yeah. Okay, okay well, <clears throat> well, I immediately think, of not a specific movie or TV show, but of a, a real location that is used in literally hundreds of movies and TV shows. And that would be the Hollywood location of Bronson Canyon or Bronson yes. Caves, yes. which was a rock quarry uh, in the Hollywood area that was used, I mean, from the 1930s on to today as a location. You know, it doubled as a cave or a mine shaft or a secret hideout, whatever it is. And it really wasn't even a cave. It was more of a tunnel that had an open end on each side. But it's great. It, it, it was really a perfect location, very easy to film and to use You know, in, in a film to, as a desolate area where there's a cave and the rocky landscape around it. And it's right by – it's like you can look up and you see the Hollywood sign. It's like it's right in that area. Yeah. But uh, it, it's great. I mean, it's and it's. I mean, it's in so many low budget Roger Corman films, TV shows. It was the entrance to the Batman cave in the '60s Batman show. It's, it's it's like just 
you know, burned into my memory. It's, it's such I, I, a second it comes on the screen in a show or a movie. I know. Oh, there's Bronson Canyon. Yeah, but but Sean, don't you appreciate like, for example, in Batman, for example, it's got like brush and stuff over it. Oh, yeah, so it, right. look, it looks different. I appreciate it when a film company will try to up. alter dress it up well, in such yeah, a way. You know? the, the nature of the way it looked and because it had two different entrances. You could disguise it in a lot oh, of different ways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a very diversatile of a location. But uh, yeah, yep. so that's that's where I go. Bronson Cage. That's a gr- that's right. a great one, Sean. That's a <laughs> great one. Uh mine uh though I had to look it up. I my memory's getting so bone tomahawk. Hey. Oh my god. Oh my god. Thing that pop- Love it. probably because I just rewatched it like four days ago. Mm. That, I, st- that, I probably seen that wouldn't film. have had something like that great come into my head but i just watched it like four days ago bone tomahawk is is oh what an unbelievably great movie james Uh, james recommends it highly james james enjoys it i love it matt matt and i have a disagreement about it i I do not care for it okay we can have i I find it i find it intolerably slow okay um everybody in the cast is great the acting, mm-hmm. you can't, I mean, you can't get near it. Yeah. Everybody's wonderful. Yeah. It just takes so fucking long to go nowhere. You get to the cave hey. and it's just a big, like, I've seen this done so much better in a number of movies. And it's like, to me, it felt a little bit like, oh, here's some horror for people who don't really like horror that much. Oh, man, hmm. man. That's, yeah, that's no, just, I, 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 I disagree with you on this. One. I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. a lot of people do, but yeah, yeah that's, that's, but but I, I am right. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. You know, you're talking to a projectionist here, sir. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I mean, what does that mean? <laughs> she knows her shit. In the world, uh, what else did that director do? I thought so much happened in that film like i mean i it would just richard so jenkins happened? in a really richard underappreciated jenkins. role Fantastic. he was in, incredible when he eats the soup oh tastes like corn it's corn chowder things are lining up <laughs> it's like so Great. awesome funny. oh maybe, things are lining up maybe then. matt maybe you missed out on the it's dialogue not a, you know what i missed all the gags i missed all the gags <laughs> <laughs> i had no i i for i like oh it's a laugh riot James, who directed it? You know what? I don't recall who directed it, but uh, okay. he's, I think he's a director who's worth. Let me, let me look it up. Hold on. Shot, Hold on. Shotzi Palmer. <laughs> Ed Flange. Okay. The director Ed Flange. of it <laughs> was. So the guy also did uh, The Brawl in Selbach 99, which okay. is incre- incredible. You guys He'll are the slowest. It, and Dragged Across Concrete, which are two other <laughs> films that everybody should see. Wow. Mm, seen either That's why I saw Bone Tomahawk. I really like those other two a lot. I was just double checking, but yeah, I but man. Pretty brutal. Well, yeah, give it another chance, Matt. I don't have that much time in my life. Oh. <laughs> I'm about to hit 60. You I need, need every be- fucking okay. hour. Oh. Okay, but this well, is so you so she bro- definitely I I don't know. You probably changed your mind. It's a, it's, it's a you pretty- know what it is? It's 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 someone who you know, it's like, look, I'm not a horror director. I make important movies. And so I'm going to make Bone Tomahawk, which is an important independent indie film take on the horror movie. And it's like, I, I just don't care for that. I, I To me, if I want that, I'll go to Ari Aster. No, you no, know, Matt, I'm, my radar is really high for that kind of bullshit. And I got to say, I never came away from it with that. I just thought, oh, this is this is going to be a Western but it's going to have some horror in it. And but it's that's not scary. It was to me. Oh my I, God. By the now time I'm, we now got I'm to really the, curious to see this. It, it, I mean, yeah. it, it's a building this whole thing of like, oh my God, when we run into these people, it's going to be rough. And you're like, so that was it. It was rough to me. I mean, I won't spoil it, but there's, uh, yeah, there's they, a they scene. Killed everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not like, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> but look, I, I think it's a matter of taste. I really do. Because I yeah. there are so many people who I respect who like this movie. And so maybe it's one of those Steely Dan things. Yes. <laughs> where uh, yes. It, it's uh, I don't care for Steely Dan. It's not no. my jam. I love Steely Dan. 
but of course you do. <laughs> but people who are very smart, intelligent, have good taste, like Steely Dan, it's just not for me. But that doesn't mean that Steely Dan is not very talented, that they're not wonderful musicians. And I'm sure clearly this guy made a movie that affected a lot of people. But the feelings I had are, you know, what I just expressed. But I'm not saying he's necessarily a terrible director or writer or whatever, whatever the fuck he did on it. Well, (laughs) Dariana, thank you for bringing up Bone Tomahawk. And another thing. thing. No, no, no. (laughs) But I'd, I'd like to know what James's cave. What James thinks about when he hears K. Well, Bone I'm Tomahawk, gonna, right? I'm going <laughs> to double, double dip back into our caves episode where I championed a movie called Time Trap from 2017, which was a wonderful oh, surprise. Great movie. Uh, yes, a, that was a, a good a film. Science great. Fiction. Now we're talking about a great movie, Matt. Oh, That's a good, good. movie. And, we're friends again. And what <laughs> the reason I had to go on a rant was because I was not a fan of many other cave movies that sort of came out around the same time that we're getting a lot more attention and praise than time trap will ever get. And it Mm. frustrated the shit out of me. So I I'm using this opportunity again to say, see time trap. It's a wonderful movie. I was, I was legitimately halfway through. I mean, it's not like it's, you know, gone with the wind, but but halfway through, I'm like, you know what? I don't know how this is going to end. I don't know how these characters are going to get out of this. And I stuck with it for that reason. And I was rewarded. And it's very clever. Yeah. yeah. And I, I personally enjoy it way more than Gone with the Wind. <laughs> it's far <laughs> less racist. <laughs> <It'll be easy. laughs> nice. Nice one. Nice one, James. All right, Matt. Wh- why don't you give us your cave thought? It's Bone Tomahawk. Okay. No, <laughs> I'm, not. <laughs> I'm not good. Uh, well, I have two that hit me at the same time. Okay. One is going to be obvious. It's a movie that James loves. It's called The Descent. I knew somebody would say that. And The Descent is fucking genius. Somebody would say that. Thank God. Well, you know, James. James is wrong because he's saying, "Well, but but that's absurd." And you know, and and so it's. But James hates a lot of things that our show embraces. He hates science fiction. (laughs) He hates horror. He hates Star Trek. Things that are good. Anyway. There are so many wonderful, if we're talking about effective cave scenes, my God. that's the whole movie. Yeah. They do an excellent job with bigger rooms in a cave and with smaller little passages. Both. Yes. They make them both scary. Yeah. And so, so I love the caves in that, but now maybe we'll get, I'll get the room back with this one. One of my favorite caves in any movie is the time machine. The oh, original. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. 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 The yes. Morlock's cave is so fucking spooky. Yep. When Rod Taylor and the rest of the Eloys, you know, he's he's going after Weena because she's been sucked into the cave through the Sphinx. And he's in there and you see all these machines pumping whatever energy I guess they need. And he's walking around and he finds this little area where the Morlocks have been eating the Eloy. So you see all the bones and, and the lighting is so scary and, and almost gothic. Yeah. And it's great stuff. So those are the two and they're perfect. Nice. Love it. Nice. Well, okay. For me, when I think of cave, I immediately go to it's, it's like a combination of all three of the Harry house and Sinbad films. Cause there are caves in each of them. Ah, you yeah. Know, from the Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, you know, look, right. look right? yeah. the Magician's Lair where the dragon is in um, uh, the Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, the Golden Voyage of Sinbad. There's several caves where Sinbad is. You know, there's great sequence between the centaur Cyclops and, and the griffin. And then in Sinbad of the Eye of the Tiger, where they, they go to bring this prince, uh, uh, turn him back from a baboon into a prince. And there's like a big kind of like ice cave. Yeah. So all three of them have caves. So that's, you know, and I, I loved seeing those films as a, as a kid. So right. great. Perfect. In that films. There we go. So caves. Nice caves. one. Love it. So Sean, why don't you give us a word? All right. The word is bald. <laughs> bald. <laughs> bald. Got it. Unfortunately, I think of G.I. Jane and 
Demi Moore. <laughs> <laughs> one of the gr- one of the great horror sci-fi films <laughs> of our time. Uh, you said I had to say the what popped into my head. That's no, the, fir- the the first genre thing. Uh, yeah, that that one. G.I. Jane. When she that, that, still that sticking was, with it, huh? Okay. That was released, and wasn't that released Scott also or not? Wasn't it? I think mm-hmm. it was. Wasn't it? G.I. Jane. Sorry, I. Okay. All right. Sorry, but you said I got to go with what pops into my head. No, yeah. but that, now what yeah. if okay. you were if you so if we're gonna s- discard that, let's say. <laughs> and now, now you have to think of a genre movie. What would you think of? Bald with a bald genre? genre movie, horror or sci-fi or fantasy. Bone tomahawk. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, what was the Star Trek with? Um, I think I know. The, the yeah, yeah. Give it the bald it lady. Man. No, not the the guy. Oh, you the think guy. of the TV series, the original TV series. Uh, or- he was also in Troy. He played Hector in Troy. Chris Banya? Uh, Is it Banya? Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's stick with G.I. Jane then. G.I. <laughs> <laughs> Jane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, now, when you when you said Star Trek, though, of course, what I thought of was the motion picture. Yeah. Star Trek, the motion yeah. picture with Ilea right. yes. versus yeah. Kambada. Yes. Yeah. Who is yeah. probably uh, one of the most attractive bald ladies I've seen. Absolutely. And I've seen G.I. Jane. <laughs> <laughs> it, so, it right. was Eric Bana, and I, I he was the bad guy. He was pretty good in it. Which Star Trek oh, movie, though, oh, was it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Which Star yes. Trek was is it? The sec- Star Trek. It's his generation. No, Star Trek. I know the one. He plays a, a Romulan. He yeah, plays yeah. A Romulan. Romulan. Wait, is this the J.J. Abrams, one of the J.J. Abrams films? I think yes, so. it is. Oh, that, yes, that's, it is. That's why I don't remember it at all. Yeah, because oh, well, well, they blow. I'm sorry. Yeah. Who's got them? J.J. Abrams does. It's the, fir- it's the, it's, it's the first Star it's the Trek first movie. One. Oh, that was the first? The first? That, that's how much I like. It, I, I, I'm I, sorry. That, nine. that one. One of, the, one of the worst movies ever made. One of, uh, one, oh, one of the, one of the no, Travis, that's Travis, that's not hard. even it, the worst it, Star Trek it takes, film ever but it, But it takes. I would beg to differ. It takes a lot to take one of the most memorable villain species of Star Trek and make him boring and lame. And that's exactly what they did in that movie. But he's bald. <laughs> he is he is bald. No. I, you know, oh. guys, I, I think maybe you're being a little harsh. I mean, it, it's not the grace, but I, I did think it was neat. I, I thought he was kind of a cool bad guy. And I did like, uh, you know, Sterling. although I had I had issues with the film, I thought Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto, I, I thought some of the people that they had cast characters, you know, I thought they did a decent job as Kirk. I would and agree. Spock and and I McCoy. Would agree. It, totally it, wasted yeah. in, in a ridiculous uh, Star Trek movie that hates Star Trek. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. I, I heard something where, and I find it hard to believe, but, but it's like JJ it, Abrams said that, he had never really watched Star Trek and was yeah, trying to not. make it more. Yeah, great, and great. It, and it, yeah. But the, the funny thing is there is a relationship between the Kirk and Spock and the Dr. McCoy characters. Let yes. me ask you though, Larry. Okay. So I know you're saying you're kind of defending them. You're saying there's some neat stuff, them, but like of yes. all the new JJ Abrams, Star Trek movies, how often do you have the urge to go back and rewatch those? Oh, I don't. I, yeah. I don't. That's the thing. It's, like, I mean, I've that, watched the original series, maybe, literally a million fucking times and I'll keep watching. And it's, and it's same with many of the Star Trek movies, but the new generation films, not only do I barely remember any of them, I just have yeah. no, no interest. It'll be like time wasted in my life. Like I have many more, way more interesting things to watch. Right. You know, it's just, that, that's what I feel. It's like, I don't care how much money they spent on, how much money it made or how, like, yes, there's some good acting, but like, they're kind of like they're, they're, I don't know. They're like like well, not movies to me. They're like I'm getting I'm tr- tired. I'm getting tired of people making Star Trek who hate Star Trek. Look, yeah. if you don't like Star Trek, then maybe you should make your own show, or make or your Star own Wars. movie, or oh, make Star Wars or whatever. <laughs> right. But if you're not gonna stick to like some basic things, like Spock is supposed to be the guy who hides his emotions, and you find that too constrictive. Then f- go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. right. 
So right. if, if, if J.J. Abrams took all that time and money and creativity and made something that wasn't Star Trek yeah, and made exactly. it original, we'd probably all be all over it. Well, see that, but yes. that's but that's Hollywood we because that. yes, because yeah. because as soon as somebody has great success with some something, okay, J.J. Abrams it had been around for a long time, but they made Lost and it made it was so popular. Just because J.J. Yeah. Abrams may be a monster kid and likes Star Trek and likes Star Wars and likes Lord of the Rings, all these things, doesn't mean he should be in charge of making no. new one versions of all of them. No. Whereas, uh, what's his name? John Favreau. Yeah. He actually he gets loved it. and got, got superhero movies and superhero comics. Yes, put him in charge of that. Like, that's the thing. It's like, that's what happens. And I don't blame J.J. Abrams for not taking the offer to do it but it's that, sure. that's what it is it's like you apply the wrong powerful people to work on franchises that they should not be working on you yeah. know it's inter- it's interesting you should say that sean because it, it kind of makes me think of the true test will be through time is it and you said is that right. a film that you want to go back to and yeah. is memorable no what is it that makes these films that some of these that we talk about memorable that you want to watch over and yeah. over again yeah and it's like if all through history when films are made there you know you, there's a big push with marketing get people to see it a lot of people see it it makes a lot of money and then it goes away do people forget about it or is right, that the right. film that people oh man the thing that i remember i want to see that film again and there's something shallow about those films that yes. makes it so you don't necessarily care to see it over and over again but god i, I watching wrath of khan yeah, the, right. uh, yeah. star trek 2 wrath of khan from 80 never get old for me never, never. gets old it's so good first, first contact so great movie yeah. like great. There's, there, yeah you know I mean, but like there's so, i mean and not to you know certainly in that franchise too, there's some duds of that original Star Trek. Movie oh sure, franchise. yeah, but sure. but the ones that are good, I love that well, one. But that one, Voyage like Home, that one. don't but knock it. Well, think, now, yeah, I know look, Matt hey, disagrees. Hey, Mariana, yeah. okay. I'm just I'm assuming that that's not your favorite, right? But the way you know what I I'm keeping quiet. I actually the only ones I like are the J J Abrams ones. Who's yeah. the only one okay. by there we go. Okay, all wow. right, all right. Now, no, 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 no. Okay, okay, look, look. I wow. hey, watch let's... them all okay. the time. Oh, okay. Hey, we, no, That's look, great. guys, no, guys, we need this. We need no, I know, you're right. We, That's we need to get shaken up. Yeah. When I saw it, I couldn't wait to talk to Matt about it. I, <laughs> that broke real bad. That took a bad hop immediately. Let me tell you, I couldn't wait to call him. And talk about those films, and ah, uh, did I get an earful about how <laughs> bad those were and how wrong I was. I guess that the people that really love the original series just hated them. But I thought that the things that, uh, there were some small changes, I thought they were really good. Mm. I thought they okay. were really good. If- what what, what Gary Ann is referring to is, just to let you guys know, and it might still be out there, but when Comedy Film Nerds was around, they had a, a website and people would blog on it. And I had a blog where I put up this article that was called Why You're Wrong About Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a bullet point list of like 20, 30 items of why this thing is the biggest pile of steaming shit to come through a wormhole. But Matt, am I am I remembering wrong? Because I seem to remember that you sort of had a softness uh, come around in the second movie. Was the, that not the here's case? here's what I liked about the second movie? It is terrible because it's con again. Yeah, yes. and and there's a bunch of logic problems that are inexcusable. However, what I liked more about this one is I felt that the characters' interaction with each other was better, so it made it more of an uh, an enjoyable one-time view. Right. It still doesn't mean I think it's a great movie at all. And do I ever want to see it again? No. Yeah. <laughs> if you're just tuning in, Sean's word is bald. Okay. All right. Let's bald. <laughs> so if I may, Sean, it took a moment, but when you s- said bald, it was like, a character popped in my mind and then it was overpowered by something else. Okay. My first thought was actually Donald Pleasance, but then it was overtaken by Yul Brynner playing that uh, oh, good. cowboy, yeah. all in black, in the uh, robot in Westworld. 
Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. And sure. And the funny thing is, so Yul Brynner, very talented actor, and he is bald, and it's weird because he's this bald robotic cowboy, and you think, oh, well, cowboys aren't bald, and he is so freaking <laughs> scary. He is so freaking scary because when you go to Westworld, it's like, oh, I want to live out this fantasy that I have, and he's this tough ass, oh, yeah. bad guy. But but cowboys right, aren't that, bald. But yeah, that's so that struck you weird that he was bald and a cowboy. Like I didn't. Yes, yes, it did. Okay, it did. Yeah. but then the but he, you never see him the, bald in the movie. When the, it, when that's well, true. I know. Does he ever I, take off his hat? I, I know, but I know because he has no back hair. He has no know, side right. hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you expect him to take his half? He has like a little puffy hair thing. But the thing that <laughs> he gets should me, have had a ha- a wig that when he took off his hat, the wig came. You know, <laughs> okay. Look, yeah. I'm just saying. When I saw this as a kid, my first thought was, "Oh, I was kind of chuckling." He's bald, like Curly, you know, Curly Howard, like Curly. Like the job. <laughs> but but the funny thing is, the that- interaction that this Yul Brynner character has it the very first moment. It's like. It's kind of a scary moment. Oh yeah, he's, he's this very tough, scary. He's a tough, badass cowboy, and it's like as as a paying customer. Oh my gosh, I I gotta have a shootout with this robot, and then he's very scary, very powerful, and he's also bald. No, so, that's great. That's yeah, a great. There we go. Yep, Yul Brenner in Westworld. Okay, okay. it's no G. Okay. James. <laughs> James. James. Well, you mentioned Donald Pleasance, and my mm-hmm. mind, of course, went to Telly Savalas. So Blofeld. Ah, uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Blofeld, sure. you know, also um Chris Waltz in uh, the more recent um Bond films. And I would also throw in Jeff Bridges from Iron Man as oh, yeah. uh, Obadiah Stain. <clears throat> That's uh, right. I guess sometimes if you want to make somebody really mean, you just make them bald. Make them bald. But Bridges in particular, he's usually got a great head of hair in his movies. And true, here is, true. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Shave it off. So, yeah. you, just, yeah. you just couldn't mention one. You had to go, all of those guys. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, That's great. Get those. Damn you, right. One that I had only recently seen. That was one I had never seen. I... We ran it at the New Beverly, and I hadn't seen it. And everybody was like, "Oh, you got to see this!" So many classic characters are based on Yul Brenner. You know the T one thousand. Yes, Michael Myers. Michael Myers, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, and, right. and yeah. I was like, it that movie is really good. Yeah, I mean, holds up, holds up great. Holds yes, up yes. so yes. incredibly well. Like I was shocked at, and yeah, he is. He's utterly terrifying larry yeah Yeah. it's crazy how terrifying he is in that film it's yeah it's it's a really good movie if people haven't seen it it's it's really special yeah i agree you will brenner is pretty imposing no matter what role he's in that is (laughs) true that voice he's yeah yeah. he's terrific yeah Yeah. so matt what do you think of when you hear the word bald well, it's interesting that Telly Savalas was brought up because I immediately thought of the Mario Bava film, Lisa and the Devil. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Nice. Which nice. is sort of an Italian takeoff of The Exorcist. And Telly Savalas plays this weird satanic character yeah. who is, in my opinion, Telly Savalas is just creepy, period. <laughs> like when I see when I've seen him on talk shows or you know a, what a Dean Martin roast or whatever, he always comes off a little like ew, but but in a good way, like in a way that like it works really well for any sort of acting that he's doing. Right, right, <laughs> right. So right. in Capricorn One, I think he's great, and uh, oh god, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just so many movies. But like Lisa and the Devil, every time they just the camera goes to him, you're like. Ew. <laughs> right. So I love that one, and then the other one that I thought of after that was the Keepers from Star Trek. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. big yes. head balls. Which the original TV yes. show. Uh, this would be from the first pilot called The Cage, which was later turned into a two-part episode for the show called The Menagerie. Great, great yeah. episodes. I love that one. Yep. Nice, nice one, bald, nice bald one, nice baldy. <laughs> now, of course, now, now I when I when I thought of this word, I immediately went to something which I thought maybe Matt would come up with because this strikes me right away, and it's even in the poster of the movie, and that would be the film Blue Sunshine. 
Yeah. Ah, yeah. yeah. Because in, in Blue yeah. Sunshine, uh, these these uh, characters in the 60s take this drug called Blue Sunshine, and it has this extremely delayed effect, like years and years later on them, they just start losing their hair and going yeah. psychotic and killing people. And the poster of the movie just is just like woman staring. She's completely bald, and she's kind of like off her rocker. And it's a great film if you haven't seen that. Well, it's one of my favorites. Eyes, yeah. We should throw, as long as you're talking about the posters, we should throw in Dawn of the Dead. And the Dawn Hills of the Dead, eyes. right. Yeah, the Hills yeah, have yeah eyes. you're right. The posters yeah, yeah. bald characters. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. That's great. A bald episode. <laughs> yeah. You know true. what? We'll have to think about that one. And, yeah. and yeah. We'll, have to wear, we'll have to wear bald skin caps at the same time. <laughs> we shall. <clears throat> nice one, it. Sean. So, James, why don't you give us a word now? <laughs> the word is bridge. Ridge? Bridge. Oh, bridge. bridge. Like a bridge a br- too far. A bridge. Okay. Bridge. Okay. Bridge. Wow. Bridge. 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 Okay. Huh. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. The first thing that popped into my head would be the bridge over River Kwai, but I don't think that one's quite right for what we're doing. Bridge over Terabithia or whatever that one's called. <laughs> there you go. That's I like fantasy. that one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say Bridge Terabithia. That's what I'm going to I don't know this movie. Here John Favreau. John Favreau. Yeah, I don't know. Very Kids it's movie. A, sadder than you think it's going to be. It's sad. Huh. Yeah. Sci-fi. By yeah. the production company that did Narnia, if I'm if oh, I'm correct. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. What's the uh what give me like the two sentence um premise? Uh, I don't know if you can I mean you didn't even like Bone Tomahawk. So I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Are they, I, how Bone gonna, Tomahawk was for children? Is, oh my God. <laughs> you uh, yeah, no, no, you don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to give both of these another try. Bone Tomahawk, okay, and then I'm going to do this one. Okay. Bridge to Terabithia. All right. Yes. Who's next? Okay. Uh-huh. Brought up this film, or we brought this up uh, recently, but it was the first thing that popped in my mind when I heard the word bridge. And that is the Disney animated Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Um, oh, yeah and, yeah. and I have to tell uh, yeah. you guys. I love that cartoon, but it was like when I saw that cartoon as a kid, it's like when they show it on TV and you only see it once and you're dying to see it again. My parents got us the record and on the record, it shows Mm. the Headless Horseman and Ichabod Crane. It's very scary. But the great thing is on that record, it's a description. It's someone reading. And there's this great, great moment when he says, oh, where was that bridge? And he describes the the headless horseman chasing Ichabod Crane, and I remember I I would listen to it over and over again, looking at the the cover of the record cover, mm-hmm. and it was just so cool. But the bridge has a very special look to it, the way the front of it is designed, and it it's I guess it's like uh, something from the East Coast. What's interesting is in Santa Cruz, there's this. Uh, train that you can go and it goes through the woods and there's a bridge very similar to the bridge in uh legend of sleepy hollow and as a kid it used to freak me out to walk across this bridge and but of course it was always in the daytime i go oh boy it'd be really scary to walk on this in the nighttime they get a headless horseman is around so that's what i think of when i heard a bridge i like that nice sean very good Actually, what I thought of was not a man-made bridge, but a bridge that is just formed naturally in nature. And that is when a huge tree falls across a chasm. And it's Uh from the original King Kong, 1933. Great one. Kong is chasing the guys across the giant tree stump. And I mean, this is a huge tree stump and it's, you know, huge, deep abyss below. And uh, these guys are in a crossing. Kong grabs it and starts shaking him off the tree. And it's, it's an amazing scene. And, you know, it's been highlighted also in the Kong remakes. But the original just can't be beat. It's fantastic. It's also great because that tree looks like it's been there for years. Yeah, It's yeah. got moss and stuff and vines hanging on it. Yeah, so, that's great. Yeah, really great one, Sean. Yeah, nice. Serious. Perfect. I, I thought the moment in the 76 one with that particular scene was a little better, personally. It was really a good, good with the bug. In that, oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 76. 70, 76. That, was, that was, it was pretty good. I mean, that was, yeah. I mean, that, I, that moment, I'm not, yeah, I'm not yeah. saying it's better than the, but I really love that moment in, in yeah. the Jeff Bridges 
but one in, in particular, eh? how they did that with the tree. Really good, really scary, really well filmed. Great, like uh, like practical effects. Yeah. It, it was just yeah. a, an incredible well, moment. That's one of the few sequences on Skull Island in the in the seventies version that they kind of did well. You know, yeah, they, they really well. dropped the ball a lot in the other stuff at Kong Island in that version. But yeah. it's a movie. It's a movie that I have more appreciation for now than I, I do did. too. I do. I have to. I, do, I have to admit. I, I do. It's not the travesty yeah. that I kind of have remembered it to be. I always it's, loved it. It was the yeah. first one I saw, so it was okay. my introduction to King Kong. Okay. So it's got it's got a very special place in, in, right. in my heart. I, I've and always it, really enjoyed it. Great really? cast too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great, Matt have a great cast. Yeah. Matt, what do you think of when you hear the word bridge? Well, I think this is going to bring Darianna and I back together again. <laughs> and that is the Evil Dead. Ah, yay. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Evil Dead 1 and 2, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. right? No, is, no, I believe I yep. so. Yeah. Yep. That's one of those things, too, where everybody has to leave this possessed house if they're going to survive. Because the, the first thing that goes through my mind in a lot of horror movies is, just run. Just get out. Just get out the front door and just start running. Right. Or get in that car and drive. You got to be able to drive somewhere. But if the bridge is out, you're fucked. That's it. Yeah, they yeah, they yeah. are not going to let you leave. If they can do that to that bridge, they can do it to any way that you're going to try to escape. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's a scary bridge to me. And the way that it kind of curves up yeah. is neat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Nice some nice, that. some nice bridge nice. action in that one. <laughs> so, James, what? That's what they what, say in the industry. <laughs> James, what is it when you think of bridge? Squid Game, because you've got the oh, contestants yes. who are doing right. these challenges, uh, that these, is uh, death-defying uh, challenges. And for me, I mean, they're right. all suspenseful. But the yes. by far the most suspenseful scene in the whole series is when they've got to cross this glass bridge. Oh and I mean, God. I was I yes. was in so much suspense, I could hear my own heart beating. It was yeah. that effective. So, yeah. yeah. That's great, a great Great, great sequence. Oh, my God. It's so powerful. Great one. Yeah, I love but, Squid Games. Yeah. So, Matt, it is back to you. Give us a good word. Okay. So, here we go. How about transform? Oh, jeez. Wow. Bone okay. tomahawk. <laughs> Transform my frown upside down? Is that- <laughs> okay. Uh, I would say American Werewolf in London is what really. Yeah, my choice. Pop, nice. Great. In uh, my head immediately. And yep. Yep. still one of my favorite movies of all time. Once again, practical effects. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So one well, of the best horror comedies too. Yes. Of all time. Yeah. Of all of yep. of all time. I yep. and it's I feel like that that genre, like when it works, man, holy Moses. Like yeah. you know, yeah. yesterday yeah. was the uh the anniversary of Shaun of the Dead, which is another one of my favorites in yeah. that. I was just gonna say that one. I, I mean there's yeah. it, there's the really true classic ones that you can maybe I mean there's no, the ones you can't think of, like, there's only a few you can think of on, on, on top of your head. I mean, to me, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, mm-hmm. uh, Shaun of the Dead, American Werewolf. You're right. Those th- those are three classics. Yeah, th- those ones are uh, really good. I kind of consider it, but it's more horror. But Cabin in the Woods, to me, too, is kind of a... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Horror, but it's not as funny, you know, and then uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Oh, one, one of my favorites of all time. Yeah. Man, I turned so many people on to that yeah. uh, movie. I would just drag them over to my house when we played that and nobody had heard of it. And holy Moses, is that a perfect little film? That I've shown is- it to people who don't like horror and they love it. They love it. Yeah, because it is hilarious. Of, of all that we're talking about. It is without a doubt the funniest of mm. all of those. It's, you know, and it's the horror is not as good, but the humor on that is like dialed up to it a, a, a ten. It's incredible, incredible. Love it. Those are the only ones I can think of. You're right. There's not a lot of them. Fright Night has it, there's some not a lot of them, Sean. Yeah, Fright Night. I mean, Fright Night's still probably more horror than comedy, but yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. 
Oh, but great. you know, it's funny when Matt said transform, there was something that popped up and then there was something that overpowered it. And my Go. only thought is, you know, if this film, they also use practical effects, but boy, I'd love it if they could redo it and go all out with practical effects like America World in London. And I'm talking about Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. Yeah. You know, it's yes. funny. Ralph Bates, he's he's so great. And um the lovely, oh gosh. Martine um, Beswick. Martine Beswick, who we met yes, at that's uh, right. Monster Palooza. You know, this Dr. Jekyll takes this potion that makes him into a woman. And you know what? It would be interesting if they had Rick Baker come in and do the practical effects. I mean, do you mm. want to see that? that I do. Be, uh, yes, I do. Be, but it's true, though. Tra- transform. Transform. Yeah. 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 You know, from a man into a woman. And then what okay. happens when you go back? So anyway, Dr. Have Jekyll and this? Sister Hyde. Gary Anna, have you seen this movie? Uh, no. I haven't. Uh, I think you might like it. It's um, it, it's Good. interesting too because so it's it, yeah, it's you know the little kind of a switcheroo on the Jekyll and Hyde thing. But what's interesting is the casting has done so well because Ralph Bates, who's Doctor Jekyll, mm-hmm. who then turns into Martine Beswick, they look like they, they could almost be in the same family, don't they? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What year is it? Uh, uh, six, 60s uh, or 70s, maybe 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, transforming <laughs> and so one, one of the, one of the films uh, i love this film low budget horror film that goes so far with the transformation effects to the point of absurdity which makes it beautiful and that is the beast within yep oh. um, <laughs> the beast within early 80s horror film about this kid who kind of just turns into that this my creature drug me to and i've never forgiven her Really? <laughs> really? It's a, it's a, it's, a it it's a grimy, dark, <laughs> weird, <laughs> ugly movie, but man is it fun and it has the most ridiculous uh, as in great uh transformation at the end it's the set piece that goes on and on and he's just transforming it's the bladder effects taken to the point of, abs- of extreme and like this big balloons blow his head blows into a big balloon and it's, it goes on forever, and it's amazing, and uh, I love it. It's like it's like let's let's take the transformation effects movie to like the most ridiculous extremes. And it's, nice one, Sean. I, yeah, I love that movie. So nice one. These James? movies you guys are pulling. Nobody's seen these movies. You guys, are <laughs> no. You guys are amazing. The beast with. I did not wake up today and have the beast within conversation on my bingo card. Like that's, <laughs> this is a monster I party. Really bring that up when I'm telling people how much I hate my sister. I bring up that movie. And nobody, <laughs> used to, they're like, oh, we never heard of it. Uh, yeah. So, so the beast within is your bone tomahawk. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is, uh, that is a scary, horribly scarring film. <laughs> Was it? And that's also Tom Holland. That's right. Tom Holland wrote yeah, it. Yeah. That's right. We, we had, had it. on our show. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> James, we, we can we, we can have him call you and maybe talk you down, or or your sister maybe. Yeah, and <laughs> J- call my sister and make her apologize to me. <laughs> James, what do you think of when you? No, hear that? you know, a lot of things jump to mind. Um, Just give go, us one. I'll go. <laughs> yes, I'll go with the first one I ever saw or remember seeing, which was Godzilla versus the Smog Monster. Where oh. the monster, Hedera, transforms from a tadpole, like a big swimming creature, to mm-hmm. a big flying creature, and then finally to a, a land creature who's walking around. And I'd never seen that before, and it blew my mind. Yeah. Of course, yeah. you know, Mothra does the same thing, but that's more of nature. This is more yes. just like fantastic. So, yes. Yeah. Great right. one, James. So, Matt, what do you think of when you, I mean, you brought up Transform? What's your your th- word thing for it. Well, I have 10. 
Uh, the first one. <laughs> just give us just no, this one. Just give us the first six. Oh, no, no, I'm the first all right. six. All right, all right. No. Well, the How first thing. One? The first, the well, the first thing that I thought of was a, a variation, of course, on Garyana's, which is the Howling. Oh uh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I love both both movies. I love the transformation. Uh, what I love about the Howling is that it definitely goes on longer, mm-hmm. and yes. it's just kind of watching someone's great bladder effect, <laughs> practical <laughs> effect, real. You know, and it's just, yes, and it's just I love it. I, I it's people have said, oh, it's too long. But for me, it's like I kind of wish it had never ended. Like the whole, <laughs> yeah, it, it would have gone on for another thirty minutes. <laughs> isn't this, yeah. isn't the story that Dante wanted to short it, and the producers go, "No, this is so cool! Look, and I it was it. like I the first it. big bladder thing." And yeah, like, it gone on much longer. Yeah. So yeah, it's great. But I am going to uh, give you a second one, and it's very quick. And that yeah. is every transformation in every common writer series, the Japanese <laughs> uh, Kusatsu series. Because what's what I love about it is that it's not that great. It's <laughs> you got a human guy and he's going to turn into Common Rider, this bug like s- cyborg superhero. It doesn't matter where he's transforming. All of a sudden, now he's in a against a black background, and it's like, <laughs> no, look, we shot this transformation scene once, and that is it. We are <laughs> not doing it again. We're going to go to the dark room. He's going to change in his thing. And then we're going to cut back and he's going to be all ready in costume. So <laughs> there this, you is only gonna, this is only going to air once on Saturday morning. The kids won't notice. No one will ever think twice. about. Nobody it. cares. <laughs> right. And, and wow. I guess they're right because I really don't care. I find that charming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. That's hilarious. Well, this has been great. This has been it a lot has of been fun. Great. Very much. You know, we've really been going in depth in all these things. But so what do you say we just try to do some of these quick and do a lightning round? What do you say? Lightning round. Lightning round. Yay. Lightning round. All right. <laughs> so we're going to go through these really quickly. So, Gariana, what do you got? Voodoo. Voodoo. Okay, okay voodoo. voodoo. Uh, got voodoo. it. Okay. Let's, um, I, Larry? I think of, I think of Live and Let Die. That's what I think of. That's nice. the first thing that gave him the nice. James Bond film. That's what I think yep. of. Uh, mm-hmm. I would say The Serpent and the Rainbow. That, oh. that was mine. That came to my mind. I'm too, Serpent so. and the Rainbow, too. Okay. All right. Carry on. All right. Give next? us another one. Nausea. Nausea. <laughs> oh, human, human centipede. <laughs> and, which is really not fair, which is really not fair because I, <sighs> I haven't seen it. But when Matt talks about it, I always get nauseated when he talks about it but Fair enough. i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to go over one day and we're gonna have to sit and watch it because yeah okay, i gotta do I like that. that but chitty chitty okay. bang bang we promised um i would say for some reason i immediately think of poltergeist 2 craig t nelson throwing up after the uh sticking the worm and the tequila yeah yeah good one <laughs> okay um for some reason i just went with the exorcist the green puke sure nice yeah, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, that that's the one that I was thinking of too. The actress, okay. uh, amazing. Okay. And what I think of is let the right one in. When the little girl nice. tries to eat human candy, Ooh. and she's used to blood, she can't handle it, so she throws up. Uh, yeah. Nice. Oh. Okay. Well <laughs> done. Like it. Well done. Visceral is my last. Visceral. One. Yes. Visceral. Mm. Wow. Visceral. Okay. Uh, I think of Dawn of the Dead. Visceral, uh, specifically at the very beginning where you go into this room and there's all these bodies like moving around and, mm. and the, uh, this woman gets her shoulder bit by one of the zombies. That's oh. it's, it's so visceral to me. So yeah, that's great. That's okay. the first thing that popped up. I'd say John Carpenter's the thing. Yeah. Just all the, all the human body parts opening and just all, all, all that, all the guts and transforming. I would say that for sure. Good. I go to night of the living dead. Yeah, uh, because it's very low budget, very raw. It's like you're there in that in that cabin. Yep, I like it. And I thought John Carpenter's the thing as well. Nice. Okay, you got one more for us? Uh sure, I can do one more. Lollygag. <laughs> Lollygag. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, wow. Who? Anyone? Jeez. <laughs> I only got I only got slim pickings and blazing saddles. Nice. <laughs> Nice. I, I personally, I get, I go to. Uh, oh, it's uh, they, they like your lollygag on the field. Your 
lollygag around the bases. Love it. Love it. What is that? Bull Durham. Bull Durham. Bull Durham. Bull Durham. Bull Durham. Classic yeah. science the fiction classic fantasy. Horror horror film. Film. Yeah. Yeah. Classic. They, he said Durham. that right before they get on the spaceship. That, that's great. Thank you. That's <laughs> All right. wonderful. Okay. All right. Uh, let me whip into my huh. three. So this is genre related. <laughs> okay. Are you guys all ignoring lollygag? That's a great. Come on. Man. I don't know. I, oh, no, no, no. no, 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 no I, the I, word. I, I just no, can't think one. of it. It's a tough I, one. I don't know. Like, uh, lollygag. God. I, it's just funny. A character doing that in a movie that's a horror sci fi. Uh, I would think of maybe like an a- Abbott and Costello who are always trying to nice. uh, do whatever they can to avoid getting into the horror that they're about to experience. That's mine. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause it, it I, seems slow. So, I mean, yeah. you know, yeah, Top that one so top that fuckers. Three yeah. stooges, three stooges meet the Martians and yeah. Go, go, <laughs> good. Three stooges in orbit. I go with that one. Stop okay. me. He, he Stump passes me. and James. Yeah. Nothing? I pass him. Well, I I I'll, I had slim pickings, but I'll go with the guys in the cave oh. and bone tomahawk because they're not moving fast. So <laughs> versus nice. <laughs> uh, those are great. Those are great. Yeah. All right, how about fangs? Fangs. 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 That, movie, that movie. That movie with just all the S's is what I think of. Where the guy oh, yeah. turns into a snake. Nice. Yeah, there you go. Nice. I'd That's say uh, any any version of Nosferatu because of the way he has his fangs in the very front. Nice. You know? Got um, Phyllis Diller and Mad Monster Party because she calls her husband Fang. Fang. Oh, great. Nice. Mad Monster Party. Okay. Mine is True Blood because the fangs are retractable. Mm. Oh, <laughs> nice. Oh. Nice. How about the word axe? Axe. Axe. Okay. Axe. Hmm. Anyone? Like, you know, like a giant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Can I go? I, yeah. yeah no, anyone, no, no. Anyone. Straight jacket. Yeah, nice one. William Castle. Nice one. Yep. Nice. That has a nice axe in it. Yep. Catch it. That's the one I think of. That, Catch that. it. Good Catch one. It. Okay. Yeah. I'd say the Amityville Horror, because when James Brolin starts getting possessed, sure. he bring it in the, because of the original owner, Axe yeah. you know, family. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, James? the obvious one is The Shining. There you go. Sure. There, there we go. go. But I do I want to throw out. in from Famous Monsters, you axed for it. That's <laughs> right. Great. That's nice. right. Nice. Okay. And how about my last one? How about Magician? Magician. <laughs> oh, Magic with uh, Anthony Hopkins. There you go. Right. Nice. That's, nice. A, that's a great movie if people haven't seen it. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think the, the trailer is the scariest part. <laughs> I agree. Interesting. Okay. I'll, I'll go with uh, Vincent Price movie, The Mad Magician. Love ah. that film. Love that film. Oh. Nice. Doctor what? Strange. Great one. Nice. Yeah. What's the Herschel Gordon Lewis movie with Montag, the magician? The Wizard of Gore. The Wizard of Gore. Thank you. Oh, uh, Wizard of Gore. Nice. That was a nice pull, Sean. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Great job. All right. There's mine. So, Sean, right. how about you give us some? All right. Here's one. Beach. Beach. Oh, oh. <laughs> first thing that came up, we've done is Blood Beach. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Blood Beach. Fun, fun one. Well, Jaws, that early scene where Chrissy's disembodied hand, the crabs are crawling around. Mm, yes, for sure. Mine would be the horror of Party Beach. Good one. Did anybody say Jaws? Jaws would be. Yeah, that's yeah. James. Uh, James got it. Good job, are we James. Done? <laughs> but you could say Jaws 2 if you want. That's true. <laughs> it would if it was a good film. And I, and I would throw in shockwaves for myself. Good. Great. Okay. Um, okay. Another one. Brain. Brain. <laughs> Return of the Living Dead. Yeah. No, nice. Yeah. yeah. Brain. Perfect. Classic Star yeah, Trek Spock's Brain. That- Spock's brain, where yes. the, the woman actually says, brain, brain, what is brain? It's, it's, <laughs> I actually really like that episode. That's a fun one. Uh, Hannibal? The scene was right oh, yeah. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, good nice. one. Great. And for me, it's the Brainiac. Mexican oh, horror yeah. classic. <laughs> no, where no. brains are also eaten. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> now, here's, here's my last one. Oh. Unconvincing. 
<laughs> wow. Oh. She could be applied to a lot of different elements, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. King Kong escapes. Ooh. As yeah. much as I love the movie, no one believes for a second that that's a gorilla. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, I would say Jaws 3D because I think it, this shark just does not look that great. Right, you know, right. You know, compared to the you know, the first one and sure. the second one, but it's the best is the first one, but in, in Jaws 3D this shark is pretty bad. Okay. James you're going to jump on me with Blade Runner 2049 just because I didn't buy oh, any of it. I didn't geez. buy any of it. Are you kidding? Hey, that man. world? Ah. You're insane. It's all right. I know. I wasn't convinced it was a it was a worthy universe to follow the original Blade Runner universe, so I I didn't believe any of it. Oh, my God. Ah. Once ah. again, I, I, I can't wait for your script, James. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be the first ah. to read it. All right, good. Darianna? I, did you just watch it the one time, James? I couldn't bring myself to watch it again. I despised okay. it. I despised it. I know I, I'm very I, in the minority, but... No, no, I did not like it either. I felt very abandoned by <laughs> it because I love Blade Runner so much. Uh, and then so watched much. it again and it was really thoroughly convinced I was I was wrong. Upon a wow. I thought okay. it was pretty, not only did I think it was good, I thought it was a pretty incredible film. Which which um, that's how a lot of people reacted to the original movie when it came out, too. That, yes, yeah, yeah. that yeah. is true. Uh, Myself included. My, am I uh, I frozen? I was just <laughs> unconvinced <laughs> that, that okay. it was I'm talking about the one on the ski lift. Oh the, 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 no, I think it's <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. The one I know. I've screen. heard of the frozen ski lift. Yeah, no, that's that. terrible. That one's horrible. Is I agree it bad? With you. Uh, really? No, it's okay. it's it's yeah. bullshit. It's all okay. bullshit. But I was gonna go like, yeah, I don't believe Frozen, the Disney one, for a second. That's not <laughs> or Pixar, oh, well, no, whatever the fuck me, it is. It's the skiers. I just I, it was just bad decision after bad decision. I mean, if you've ever ski, they. They check. Yeah, yeah. I know it's a lightning yep. round, but it was just no. It, it, just it, everything about it was just like unconvincing. Well, uh, if you're in that, uh, I will say that my my unconvincing choice was. I know some people love this movie. They some people don't agree with me, but don't breathe. Not for a fucking second do I believe that that fucking blind guy is going to kill all those people. They can't get out of the fucking house. I agree. And they, they, they made a fucking sequel to it, too. He's still doing that? Really? No way. I'm sorry. Throw a fucking chair at him. Do something. It's, <laughs> it's just, they did everything they could to try to make it believable. No, I'm sorry. It doesn't, doesn't Don't buy it. Don't buy it. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Love it. Love it. Okay. Lightning round's um, very fun so um, far. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Loving it. My first one here, Boomerang. Boomerang. Ooh, boomerang. boomerang. Got it. Outer Limits. Oh. Ah. ah. Yes. Fun and Games. Episode. The episode Fun and Games. Right. Aliens have a very nasty boomerang that hurts people. Uh, mine would also be a boomerang that hurts people. Uh, Road Warrior. That's right. what I was going to say, Perfect. too. Road Warrior. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Awesome. I love it. Soft. I, I love that movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Larry, the word is boomerang. I can't think of anything other than the Road Warrior one. That's the first thing that came into my mind. That's okay. Yeah. 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 Not, sorry. Too many, not too many sorry, boomerangs, man. really. Yeah. I, lo anybody, I lose. I lose. Anybody I'm remember sorry. Uh, I don't have Mr. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, where yeah. uh, the, the puppet, uh, Lady Elaine, says yes. uh, her magic spell, boomerang, tumerang, sumerang. Oh, wow. Jeez. Oh. That's Deep going back. Cut there. That's going back. How about okay. Blackadder? The, was there a boomerang in that? Yes. The, the ah. queen gets a boomerang. And, oh, yeah, yeah. And Blackadder says, this is a gift for you. It's a stick that when you throw it away, it comes back. <laughs> and she goes, that's no good. Because when I throw something away, I don't want it to come back. Uh, Classic comedy. Uh -huh. Number two, grafting with a G. Grafting. 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 Oh, okay. I got it. Okay, I got it. Weirdly, the one that came to me was that movie Splice. Oh, okay. 
Okay, yeah. that's that's good. That's, yeah, that was appropriate. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. yeah. Like, Mine was the uh, classic horror French film, Eyes Without a Face. Oh, yeah. Because it's uh, the surgeon, uh, his disfigured daughter, he's uh, killing women and using their skin from their faces to reconstruct his daughter's face. And it was that right. trope was used in a million different other yes. horror films. But yes. Yeah. Isn't there a great sequence in Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell? Isn't there, there's a, there's like a sewing uh yeah there's sewing an eyeball in or something something in there yeah yeah okay. something in there that's that's what i thought of when okay I, I, and mine is uh crimes of the future oh yeah Cronenberg. I not, yeah i've not seen that yet okay You're going you haven't going, seen crimes of the future no no i guess uh, yeah maybe, now do we all agree that that's a good movie the, the, the new one <laughs> yeah yeah god what yeah. year did that come out matt oh wait yes i have Yes, I have seen that. I'm sorry. I have seen that. Yes. Yes, I enjoyed Apparently that. Apparently, it made quite the impression Well, it was you. just very bizarre, but no, I liked it. Yes. It's no yes. Frozen. It's, it's, all right, yeah. You referring to the Cronenberg one? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's a very good film. Yeah. That's Love a it. very all good right. film. We're, we're back, everybody. And speaking of Cronenberg, my go-to was Rabbit uh, with Marilyn Chambers, because that's the whole genesis of how yes. she gets yes. the vampiric underarm. Uh, yes. Okay. And finally... Hill, Hill, Hill. Got oh, it. Okay. No. Okay. Anyone? The ma- the Matrix. That's yeah. when yep. they he offers uh, Neo the the red pill or the yep. blue pill. Which one? Mine too. Take? That was yeah. mine. Yeah, Matrix. I mean, that's the one that popped immediately into my head too. For me, it's any science fiction movie where a pill <laughs> is the meal. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's great. Oh, this yeah. is roast beef. <laughs> mm, yeah, and going back to Willy Wonka. Speaking of which, oh, there you yeah. go. There you yeah. go. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, love that. Nice one, James. All right, all right, hey, Matt. Matt. I, I don't know if this will be for Gariana, but maybe. I think she. Oh, Tomahawk. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Pathetic. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, um, <laughs> now, here we go. Here we go. Migo. Oh <laughs> no! I gotta pass. I don't even know what that is. Miko oh, is a, a toy line. Maybe, maybe I should give her another one. Oh, I like, like that, that one. A, all right, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'll look, just pass. I, I don't want to. You know, I don't want to. Because I had Amigo Planet of the Apes Cornelius, which was one of my favorite Migo figures of all time. I love that thing. Sure. Okay. Anyone else? Yep. Well, yeah, I, I I think of not just the toys, but I think of the Mego commercials for all, all the superhero toys, the Star Trek toys line. Yeah, I, just, I mean, I just the commercials come to mind because I'm thinking of movies. So like the Mego mm-hmm. commercials come to mind from the 70s. Great. Yeah, and I had the uh, the Mego Bat Cave, and I love that thing. Mm-hmm. Nice. And, and when I think of Mego, I think of the commercial as well when they're introducing all the superheroes mm-hmm. and they're describing every superhero as Spider-Man and Superman, and they're giving them all these great descriptions. And then they get to the Falcon <laughs> and they just call him the black superhero. <laughs> <laughs> and so I guess that's a power. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> and it's, it's a rare instance of a DC Marvel crossover. That's true. Yeah. Yes. You're right. Okay. And my next one is dubbed. that's good godzilla well yeah uh that's what i thought of too i mean the the first godzilla film i saw which was the original it was all dubbed but you know i didn't know any better and and i i loved it that's a good one yeah yeah the 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 trend the the dubbing didn't bother me really i i thought the what shaw brothers just the shaw brothers (laughs) great sure nice yeah all that just so so poorly dubbed all of them <laughs> right so bad like there's not a single one of them that's not just horrifically badly dubbed but it just makes it kind of surreal in its own weird thing you know now yeah 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 very true very I, true i would go with actually the dino de Laurentiis flash gordon film because <laughs> i had no, I, no idea for a long time that sam jones was dubbed but I Me thought neither. for a dubbing job, it was very, very good. Yes, I agreed. Yep. So there you go. And the funny thing, Sean, when you told me that was the first, I, I didn't know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was blown away. And what I was thinking when I thought of it was, I wasn't thinking of a specific film. I was thinking of most films now when I want to watch them that are foreign, 
I prefer them to be subtitled and not dubbed. I, I've <laughs> rarely run into a, a more recent film that is dubbed that I thought worked. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Well, not only that, but even when I watch new movies, I like to watch them caption just so I don't miss any dialogue. So I like subtitles all the time now. <laughs> ah, that's true. That's Interesting. A very good point. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. And then finally, ball. 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 A ball. A ball. Huh. <laughs> oh. Uh, that's easy is, for me. Is it the in the changeling? Is it the changeling with George C. Scott? Isn't there a little ball? That's, yes, that's my choice too. Okay, oh. that was my choice. Yep. Okay. There you Got go. Another one? Anyone? Uh, what was the one with the silver ball with the blades that came out? Great. Ooh. Phantasm. 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 Great. Thank you. That that's that too scary too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for taking <laughs> notes. Sean. Or Larry, just write down pencil down. Too scary. <laughs> too scary. The shots of that are incredible. Yes. Are. Oh yeah. yeah. Very shots cleverly done too for the time. We we really hope to get true. we hope to get that director on the show. That would be yeah, really, really definitely. Good. Yeah, yes. sure, yeah. there, literally some shots of it were like a baseball pitcher throwing a, yes. a, a prop through a hallway. That, really? the movie, no. movie, yeah, yes. movie is really low budget. And some shots yes. were like a you know half uh, of it back, on glass background. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and yeah, it was. I mean, they just did all kinds of tricks, but it worked. He was very, very, very clever, very clever yes. director. Yeah, yep. And of and course, it, uh, again, The Shining in the corridor when the ball comes up to Danny. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. For sure. And what I was thinking of was Raiders of the Lost Ark. Ah! Oh giant, yeah, of course. Giant right. ball. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Perfect. Kaboom. Well, this has been great. Yeah, <laughs> it has been great. I could do this all night, and I think yeah. we have. <laughs> We've learned so much about each other. I have, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know, and I still love all of you. <laughs> and I hope you feel the same way because you know, who knows? I could get a head injury and suddenly <laughs> bone tomahawk makes sense to me. And <laughs> all right. watch it again. Watch I will. Again. You know what? I will. Yeah. I will. I will take you up on that challenge. So, Garyanna, we're so honored to have had you back. Uh, we have to get you back sooner, if yeah. that's Thank okay you. with you. It's been so fun. It's been great. We'd also like to know, what have you been doing? We know that you've had quite a busy schedule and that you've been working on some very important films. If you could give us just a little bit of a rundown of what you've been up to. Uh, yeah, just uh, mostly traveling, uh, running films, working film festivals, and actually running a lot of film, not digital, but actual film. film. Uh, worked on Oppenheimer, was on the 70 millimeter crew for nice. that. Nice. Wonderful, oh, wow. wonderful group of people. And uh, then went to Atlanta and ran that uh, because they sent us all over the country to run it because there's just not people that can do it anymore, especially, I mean, it's hard to find people that can run 35, but to run wow. 70, not a lot of people that can do it anymore. So they were sending us all over. It was, it was really, really fun, really exciting. Uh, a lot of travel. Uh, Atlanta is uh, a lot of very nice people. But the weather is horrific and the yeah. bugs are, uh, that, yeah, yeah. That, that It was just really worse than I thought it would be with the bugs and stuff. Like, I I, I thought I knew humidity. <laughs> Turned out, no, no, I did not. So, yeah, just doing that, running films and feeling very lucky to uh, be here today with uh, good friends like you guys. Aww. Oh, well, and, yeah, and, and, and I think you're really, I mean, talk about doing a service for mankind or humankind, you know, that you are kind of like the, the curator of this. It's a technology that's older, but yet I'm hoping that like other things have come back vinyl and it's, you know, swinging yeah. Back. yeah, it's swinging back. A lot of the big directors really do prefer it. And like we were talking about earlier, if it's digital, not everybody has, especially small towns, countries where they don't have a stable power grid, uh, uh, like oh, India. Yeah. India still shows film. A lot of places in Canada still show film. 
uh, because it's more stable with the power that we have. Digital is, as you guys well know, it's very temperamental. It has to be at a certain, and they don't have uh, a lot of countries like their power grids are just not stable. So they Ooh. they go with film. So it's still wow. around. I've always liked it more. I've always liked it more yeah. than digital. I think it's just there is a uh, a richness to it. They don't have the colors or are better, particularly, you know, some of the films that we were talking about. And, uh, but, you know, like Oppenheimer looked just a lot better on film, looks so yeah. much better on film. You yeah. know, when you compared the two, I mean, it, it was just hands down. No, no comparison, but it it is. Uh, it's swinging back that way. And I, I hope that they do kind of have both. Like I hope that right. theaters have a way I'll be doing TCM next week and they're running a ton of film there. Oh, cool. of film. great. I hope you guys are going to go see some uh, movies over there. Maybe you should. Show a lot of, yeah. A lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff. They always do. Bone Tomahawk. Um, bone, <laughs> things like Bone Tomahawk. <laughs> <laughs> We showed that Mexican Batwoman. Um, oh yeah! Oh, oh like dear a superhero. Lord. Yeah, like from the fifties or sixties. What is that one called, guys? Uh, Mexican I Batwoman. I guess it's just called the Batwoman. I should have guessed. Yeah, that, yeah. That we showed that last year, and I don't know. Have any of you guys seen that one? No, no. It's, it I know, think it just didn't it just come from, out or something too. Like it's it's yeah nineteen. 19- 68 Mora Monty is the she played that is I, I highly recommend it I highly that was wow. had never heard of it it was packed it was just as bananas as you can imagine <laughs> so nice. that was one of their midnight movies and it was oh. absolutely incredible they I mean they awesome. show yeah. a lot of good stuff well this has been such a delight and yeah. uh I think folks we should raise our glasses yes. and toast Gariana Abeda and the Monster Party Word Association Game, Volume Two. Thank you guys so much. You guys are so fun. Thank you. Time for a listener shout out. Shout out. Shout out. the word. That, that makes me think of shout outs. <laughs> 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 Okay, well, I have just the thing. This goes out to <laughs> listener Stephen Wright from Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, All right. Pre- presumably not the legendary comic Stephen Wright, uh, which if it is, Stephen would like to invite you on Monster Party. But uh, <laughs> listener Stephen Wright from Indianapolis, who is the proud owner of two Monster Party shot glasses. Cool. Oh, twice the drinking. That's right. You know, I love it. It, it it's only appropriate when you're buying the shot glass because you don't want to drink alone. No, right? no. You gotta, you gotta have company. <laughs> you gotta toast, right? Yeah, me and my imaginary friend. <laughs> now, guys, if I have a cocktail or two while we're zooming, I'm not drinking alone, right? I'm with no. you guys, right? Okay. Right. Okay. I just yes. just wanted to be on the safe side here. <laughs> <laughs> also, a shout out to our uh, longtime friend and listener, Brandon Meyer. Brandon. Right, Brandon from Onalaska, Wisconsin, who is now the proud owner of a Monster Party PPE cloth mask. How nice. about that? Someone and, um, taking their health into their own hands. <laughs> but thank you, Stephen and Brandon. Uh, we appreciate your patronage. And hey, um, Matt, I think you have a shout out as well. Well, I do. Uh, we have a longtime supporter, listener. He's helped us with so many things. Uh, One of the things he helped us with was to get John Stanley on our show. And I'm Ah. talking about Ed Martinez. And Ed Martinez did a lot of uh, special effects. And uh, a film that he did, he worked on, is called The Dead Pit. You know this film, right, Sean? I love love this movie. It's great. Well, Ed Martinez and his wife Nina... We're recently on the Clive Barker podcast as part of their A to Z commentary series. And since they're finally at Z for zombie, this was a great opportunity for them to talk about the behind the scenes magic that went into the making of the dead pit. 
Now, this is episode 446, and you can find it on YouTube. Just go to at BarkerCast. Do it. And let's remind our listeners that we will once again have a booth at Monsterpalooza in Pasadena. May 31st and June 1st and 2nd. And uh, this is an epic annual event for us. Oh, yeah. uh, we've had our own booth now for several years, and it is so much fun. If you've listened to the shows, uh, you know what I'm talking about. By all means, buy your plane ticket, get your travel package. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful Pasadena. And uh, come meet with us at our booth, because we'd love yes. to meet you in person, we love chat you. with you. It, it would be wonderful. And you know what else will be at our booth? Monster Party merch. Yes. yes. No, there's only one other place you can get Monster Party merch, and that's on our eBay store, which is called right. Monster Party Store on eBay. Should be easy no. to remember. Right. Where we will uh we'll have the aforementioned Monster Party shot glasses. And remember, two is always better. The yes. Monster Party logo t-shirt, which is beautiful. Uh, -huh. uh, we have the Monster Party PPE cloth mask. And um what else? What do we have? I'm forgetting something. Well, we have the kaiju t-shirt as well the kaiju t-shirt as well yes thank you and then we have to also yeah. point out that on the logo t-shirt the logo glows in the dark Ooh, right yeah very exciting oh and you know what else i forgot the legendary monster party cap of course yes yes <laughs> how could you forget that yes so great now it, it's great if you're bald <laughs> <laughs> And and it, it keeps you from dripping walls if you go into a cave. <laughs> True. That's right. <laughs> Don't get it sticky. <laughs> now, if you buy merch from our Monster Party store and you also happen to be a Patreon member, we will throw in free surprise goodies. Surprises. Courtesy of our friends Jason Lindsay at Biff Bang Pow Toys and creature creator extraordinaire Ted Haynes. These are two guys who are like words that make you think of only one thing, and that is joy. Now, a word that I'm having trouble associating at all right now is Patreon, because it seems like every <laughs> couple of weeks I forget that word. Uh, can you remind me, please, what is this Patreon all about? Well, Patreon is a word that when you hear it, you can only think of Monster Party. Right, James? Ooh. Of course. <clears throat> because it's a platform that provides you with the best of exclusive bonus material from Monster Party. Now, we're talking about bonus audio episodes, our special shows like Monster Party Masterpieces, our various Toy Time episodes, rare behind-the-scenes convention footage, our video diary of our famous trip to Japan, vintage sci-fi and horror collections edited by our resident Lyscarian, John Bordeaux, and so much more. Well, that sounds fantastic, but I'm I, I gotta say I'm I'm starting to think of saving all my money to go to 70 millimeter film screenings now. So <laughs> I, I don't know if this is something I can afford. <clears throat> How much is it? Well, for less than the price that you'd pay for a bucket of hot buttered ant mandibles, you <laughs> can become a monster party patron. And that price is five dollars a month. Five dollars. That's that's a great price. I mean, I mean, you can't get an exclusive "I Love Bone Tomahawk" button for that amount. I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, they, you they're, can't. They're, they're going eBay now for like hundreds of dollars. So, are they yeah. really? <laughs> well deserved, I might add. Okay, well, that's sound, sounds fantastic, Matt. Where, 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 you're, you're, you're for Clement. Um, <laughs> it sounds fantastic. How can I sign up to this wonderful Patreon thing? Well, all you have to do is you go to patreon.com, you go to Monster Party, you click the join button, and next thing you know, you'll be so happy, you'll be dripping like a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> and um, speaking of dripping teenagers, let's remind everyone we're on social media. We are on the Instagram at Monster Party HQ, X, formerly known as Twitter, also Monster Party HQ, Facebook, Monster Party TV and YouTube, also Monster Party TV. And wherever it is you're listening to us on, please take a moment, send us a review, send us your thoughts. We'd love to hear them and we will read them on the air. And we won't just read your review on the air. We'll present each word as part of a different word association test whose purpose is to drive anyone who takes it mad. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, I am Matt Weinhold. I'm Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Stroth. And I'm James Gonis. Keep America strong!
and play your own word association game. And when you hear the word monster, the only answer is party. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'm sticky. Who's that? Mystery voice. There he is. There's Sean Sheridan. What's going Sean on? Impish Sheridan. Sean Sheridan. <laughs> the lovable imp from the bottle. Yes. Yes. That's I. <laughs> What's you going know, on? I, you know, when I think of Sean, I actually don't think of Leprechaun, though. <laughs> I wasn't thinking Leprechaun. I was thinking Troll 2. <laughs> when you think of Sean, you think of Troll 2? Of course. Oh. I think I think I did actually get first tell Matt about that movie. So that's, that's right. Oh my, go- oh my god! Oh my god! You know you. Oh, oh my god! You know what? You just you just found something, Matt. You just it's word association. When you say <laughs> one of our names, what pops up? <laughs> when you say the word James, for example, like what pops up? What what comes to your mind? That's what I'd like to know. Word association. Angry. <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? Whimsical. Did you did you say religion, James? I said, no, he said whimsical. <laughs> Sean said whimsical. Yes. Uh, I said bitter. Curmudgeon. <laughs> Larry <laughs> would be uh, delusional. <laughs> really? Is that what you think? Delusional? Not really. It's like delusional. <laughs> Passionate. No, I, no, I what, would say pa- bully. Passionate. Oh, oh, well, <laughs> it's you know, ner- uh, nerd no, bully. No, no, nerd, no right. very specific okay, well, type of bully. Well, you know what? This is okay. This is very. This has been great. <laughs> no, no, Sean, because what Matt has brought up, what Matt has brought up is don't read too much it, authenticity. No, into this. no, no, no. I'm reading into it. It's it's like we can learn from this, and we can learn to better ourselves or something. I okay. don't think so. How yes, long has it so, been since we started this? <laughs> hey, man, I've come a long way. A long way. You say so. Okay, oh, here we go. come on. Oh, really? <laughs> here's, here's, really? Here's Gary Anna. She'll, she'll help settle <clears throat> this. Thank God. What she get? She doesn't know. Yes, she does. She knows intuitively. Bring the guest in, please. Here she is. She's, she's coming. All right. Green room. <clears throat> Gary Anna, can you hear us? She's there, but she's not there. There's Working. no there there. She you heard can the see your letter G. Up <laughs> oh, there she is. Oh, hey. oh yeah, oh yeah. Now we can see you, but we can't hear you. Uh, audio connecting. This feels good. Uh-huh. We're working it out. A little, yeah, I'll little tech out. issue. Yeah, it's almost there. I can tell. <clears throat> almost there. Almost. Almost there. Stay on target. Stay on target. Stay on target. Oh. Turn the sound on. <laughs> well, I don't think. What, what, uh-huh. so, I see a check so mark. What, so you say, oh, okay, there it is. Yelling. Can you there hear it is. now? Hey. We can. Sorry about that. Hi. Hey. How's it going? Uh, oh, we're so happy on. to see you. Yeah. How's everyone? Very well. How's everyone, How are you everybody? Guys? I guess we're Great. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Black t-shirt day. I'm glad hey. you guys all got that memo. Every yes. day is Black t-shirt day. Representing, mm. is that vodka you're drinking? Yes, that's how <laughs> yeah, she does straight. it. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I thought, I thought, man, boy, she's going all out doing the. Once bottle. it hits six thirty, it's like <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> uh, she's, somebody, she's probably in a safe environment. <laughs> See where, you in jail. <laughs> okay, so no, no, no. It's it, it's a sparkling thing. It's something yeah, it's that's a sparkling spark- water. Just that's a sparkling water. I like it oh. better if it's got bubbles in it. Hey, That's I am with you. I love you're, the bubbles. I do. I you're, love a, the you're a bubble. Water. You guys are, how many people are bubble people? I, I, I am. My oh. wife is not, but I am. I am not. <gasps> I'm Your not. wife's not into no? bubbles? No, she doesn't like the sparkling. <clears throat> yeah, me neither. Really? Uh, I watered no. down soda. I'm drinking right now. I'm drinking there a, you go. a polar seltzer. Nice. Right. Quite good. Oh. Cheers. There you go. Cheers uh, to you. Although, Cheers. although, you know what my favorite and acid is? Alka-Seltzer. Oh, Alka-Seltzer, yeah. Yeah, same thing. 
I fucking, you yeah, know what? It's weird, effect. but over the years, I've actually mm. come to like it. Like, <laughs> it's comforting. Like, when I have it, it's yeah, like, yeah. I'm going to be all right now. Because I'll just sense that says it's going to make me better. Yeah, do you think you of that little sense of doing something important well, do you, to your body. Do you think of that little guy, that little guy, little speedy. He goes, yeah. hey, everybody. Uh-huh. Is that what you think Hi. of? Yeah, right. He's, in, like, he's in your system. He's you invading know. your body. Yes. Right. <laughs> I'm going to go tackle Matt's rotten shrimp. So, so I'm more of a Tums guy just because it tastes like candy, you know? Yeah, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> it doesn't do yeah, anything. It's, right, it's, exactly. it's pretty, yeah, I've never had like a seven that really worked. to have any. Yeah, yeah you, need, you, need to, I, you need to eat like 10 of them. Well, that's, yeah. well I don't eat 10, but I And eat then you more. get a stomach ache from eating too many Tums. True. If you're, li- if you're listening now, we are sponsored <laughs> yeah, I hope, by hopefully Tums they're listening. and Alka-Seltzer. The world of, tr- of Tums. Sex <laughs> and Tums. <laughs> Uh, it just oh. makes me happy that you have a favorite anti-acid. Yeah, I, that's, what, that's, do, do you, that's our next episode. Do, do, do you have one? No, I don't. I don't. And I feel like I should now. Well, yeah, do you, no, no, no. Do you like, uh, but you're like one of those, you know, you're one of those like regular people just like, hey, you know what? I like all antacids. No, may, maybe <laughs> she's the kind of person that she says, you know, I don't need them because I don't have any problems like you guys. You know, no, I've we're got all, all kinds of this stress far away from a stomach ache at all times. Okay. She's, she, she is an undecided voter, and we have to debate to convince her which side to choose. Okay. I, no, 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 no. But because I've heard, I've listened to my friends, uh, Sean and Matt, and I'm like, you know what? Perhaps I should try the little speedy alka seltzer. I should. Try. It's just that you got to put it in water. It's got to fizz, and then I I got to drink. It's like it's too much hassle. With times I just too I just much pop it hassle. in. Yeah, water, two tablets. It takes about it's under a minute to dissolve them. Sure, and then like immediate <laughs> relief, immediate because it's also got a little bit of aspirin in it. Aside from the antacid part. Oh, oh, and that now you know, know. You know what else Alka Seltzer makes now? You're not going to believe that? this. Flavored? It, oh, wait, well, no, no, they did that, but they refer? they did that, but no, no, no. Uh, hangover relief. <clears throat> oh. Really? Oh. Yes. Yeah, oh, you man. you heard me. Interesting. Wow. Gariana, you ready for this? Or ah! you know, <laughs> well, uh, Gariana, thank after you, you so finish much. that bottle. You're gonna, you well, know, you turning, might. Need to... I'm turning off my phone here. I don't want <laughs> oh, anybody to bother us. No, sure. no, no, no. This is a very I special event. I refuse to be bothered. And and I want to thank you so much for being with yeah, us. It's yeah. been a while. Yeah. It's been so long. Mm-hmm. We so should have nice had you on to early. Be asked to join. You guys are always so much fun. We are. Thank we're a good time. Plus, I've, I'm already, we're here less than three minutes. I'm learning new stuff about Matt. I never knew he had a favorite anti-acid. I, I, it's exciting. It's exciting to learn that. It really is. Okay, Real so are, are, are we ready to tackle Pepto-Bismol? Wait. wait. <laughs> ah, that should be, that should ah. be word, word association. What do you think of when you say the word pink? Pepto-Bismol. Pepto-Bismol. Or, yeah. the, or like the commercial says, Pepto Bismol. <laughs> Is that what it says? Yeah, they would really? do that. They would do the two words. It's like you know, but you have the stomach ache, and then you're like, oh. Okay, Pepto-Bismol. you know what's really weird is, have any of you guys ever had poison oak before? Sure. And do you remember you had to yeah. put that stuff kid, on maybe, you, and bit. it's like pink. Yeah, yeah. Oh my lotion. Oh yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah, and sometimes you can get the two mixed up. Oh, oh, I gotta put this on, and it's Pepto Bismol. <laughs> Did, Did you ever do that? that? Well, I look, I don't want to point fingers or anything. But did your I'm brother did that to you? I'm just your brother saying, did that to you, didn't he? I'm just saying, you know, they <laughs> should make these slightly different colors, but I think they each have this feeling that I'm the bright pink color. I'm not They're both changing delicious. my pink color. Well, yeah, okay, you know, I swear this will be the end of it. But before Pepto Bismol, uh, there was before, see, like Pepto Bismol was like a revelation in my household because before that, yeah. whenever you had, because Pepto Bismol is more like diarrhea and that kind of thing. Yeah. So yes. before before Pepto Bismol, we had to drink this stuff called Kaopectate. Oh, <gasps> yeah, yeah. And maybe yeah. I brought this up before, but Kaopectate <laughs> was the most horrid thing that, like, when you had when your stomach was aching and you felt like you were going to die, and you're like any kind of relief, and your mom would go, "Well, you could have some Kaopectate." And you go, yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm, yeah, because it, it was like Pepto Bismol, but like they removed all flavor and they added 
more of a a, a taste of death, <laughs> rotting <Yeah>. flesh. <laughs> yeah, and it was right. horrible. And then Pepto Bismol came along, and it was had a little bit of sweet and game changer coating, and <laughs> oh, and then they made the tablets where you didn't even have to but talk about. You know, you don't have time for the that's true. Uh, yeah. Alcacelser, a couple yeah. Pepto Bismol tablets, and you're on the go. Yeah. I smoke. All right. How I old smoke are we? Pepto Bismol. What yeah. age am I? <laughs> oh, you know the best aspirin, the best <laughs> laxative. You, I'm telling you. Do we all admit that kale pectate sounds like one of those twenty five dollar shakes from Erewhon that they sell? <laughs> right? It does. <laughs> Probably if the you, same thing too. If, <laughs> if if you're just tuning in, you're, you're just listening to in. Monster Party podcast as we discuss <laughs> it's medical party. remedies. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we have to save this for our antacid episode. There yeah, so, for sure. So look, see now, Dariana, you can see Hi. that we're we're very happy because we we've, we've had a, a <clears throat> normally we don't even see each other that much, but I, we, I, I, which I I that's unfortunate. I know it is because, you know, we've fallen into the COVID rhythm and and then James lives in Palm Springs. And so, but we got together and we did this commentary for a DVD. And then we recently got together for Sean Sheridan's birthday and James couldn't make it, but it was delightful. And we're all there and we're having a good time. We're having drinks and sake and Japanese food. And it was delightful and presents nice. were given out. But then, Ariana, I have to tell you, so we're getting out all our presents. And Larry gives out all his presents, and then I give my presents to Sean, and I'm giving him presents, and then all of a sudden I pull out this little Buck Rogers die-cast spaceship, <laughs> and I give it to him, I'm like, hey, this is from my collection. He's like, oh, this is so great. And what does Larry say? Larry says, oh, I have that with the box, and it has the original <laughs> missiles, and where's the original Buck Rogers and the Tweaky? <laughs> and I was just like... Wait a minute. I just gave this. <clears throat> what is the point of this statement? Where, like, you know what, Sean? You should be offended by the fact that he gave you that. Hey, hey, look, I'm on saying no. I think it was a lovely gift. A now, lovely gift. Now, it's, after no, a week well, and a half. It's it's kind of like nah, I don't want to go. There. No, you know what it was? It was like he couldn't. There's an inner urge for him to go, you know what? I win, though. I have a better one. <laughs> All right. If you think you're better no, than me now, no, you're Sean, not. That's, no, that's not right. It's, 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 I think you can blame the sake. It sounds like you can blame the sake. Because he couldn't sure. control himself. It was, uh, you know, all his inhibitions were gone. He had a little Pepto-Bismol and he was ready to go. <laughs> and, okay. okay. And I look, think that it, what he should have then after you said that, Larry, I think what Sean should have done is just thrown it back at me. <laughs> How fucking And stormed Gary. off. He should have said, yeah, right. yeah. Are, are you giving me a used gift? That it doesn't is it complete? I mean, it's one thing to not. And you would have done box. that. You would have yeah. done that. No, I would have been polite, and I would have said thank you. This is a. It was a, a stocking lovely... stuffer, and yes. you know, not, maybe not everyone is like you, where they everything well, has to no, be perfect. No, no, it, it, yes. no, and we didn't have it either. So it's, I it, didn't I, have I it. That's I, right. I can't speak for Sean, but <laughs> I could see the look on his face. How happy he was. So you did a that was a great gift. Sean was very happy. Actually, yeah. I'm I'm actually more disappointed than Sean. I thought Sean would have had that, you know. <laughs> and and it would and, and and the funny thing is is like every time you know I go over, you know, I try to take pictures of Sean's collection to make sure I can see what he's gotten because he changes things out. You know, I don't know, but if he had that, but I could have sworn he had that. I could have sworn he did. Well, that one does. very similar. I think we have now, a, yeah, a little a, teeny a, one a and the classic. You're the kind of guy who like someone brings over a cat with three legs and you're like, eh, doesn't have all the legs. <laughs> well, you know, I'd say. Not complete. Well, I mean. Well, uh, I, I like my cat's mint. <laughs> <laughs> look. Look. All right. I'm sorry, it's, Ariana. It's, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the. No, we'll get to the festivities this is here. The bus. This is no, the bus. no, no. It's like, hey, let's rip into Larry. We'll rip into Larry more a little later. You know, <laughs> just because yeah. I'm going to rip into Larry no, episode. No, no, no. So, no, and what did I give Sean? Oh, so I gave Sean, it was vintage and, you know, may not have been the best shape, but it was complete. 
It but I, its and so I could have said it like, has, oh, great. Oh, the box is a little jacked up. And oh, look, the, had the, the cellophane. Oh, the cellophane window is a little broken. Sure. You want that? Yeah, sure yeah, you want yes, that, Sean? Yes. Yes. But it was complete. It was complete. So you, know, so you win, Larry. That's no, what this it's, is no, about. It's not about, no, no it, it's not about winning. It's just making Sean happy. Were you happy, Sean? That's your mission, both of you, to always make sure I'm happy. Yes. You have to be aware of that. But yes. you know what? So, so, yes, so, no, 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 no. So I'm going to go out on a, 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 I'm going to go out on a big, big leaf here. Okay. I want to say to, to Matt, no, just bear with me. Yes, I will. Matt. I apologize. I am sorry for making you feel bad about giving Sean a subpar gift. I apologize. So you do so, think it was a subpar uh, gift? No, 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 no. no. Wow. I, apo- I apologize. I apologize for ripping into the lovely gift that you gave Sean wow. that he didn't have. Okay. And I thought that was very nice. And the fact that it came from your collection is very special. Apology so, accepted. Sure. Uh, there we go. So and and so, so what we can learn here is that. I am learning and I am getting, I am. You're getting, getting better, better all the time. Now, speaking of go. gifts that are complete, Dariana Abeda is on our show. That's right. And uh, <laughs> he has been doing, I, I want you to talk about some of the stuff you've been doing oh, later oh, like, when we do, but you, oh, she's, d- Dariana has been doing some amazing things. And so let me, but before I do my intro for you, I want to make sure. So, cause you were talking about, doing stuff for Oppenheimer. And so mm-hmm. what would you yeah. what would you call that? Uh a good paycheck? <laughs> <laughs> good. I can if we if we were to make that into a profession name. <laughs> what, I was what would you on call the 70 millimeter print team. I was one of the Ooh. people that was working on the 70 millimeter print, putting them together. And getting them ready to be shipped all over the uh, world, actually. Oh, ah, wow. Cool. Yeah. And so what would you call that? What would that be like? Yeah, quality print, control? Print curator? Or? Or, yeah. Uh, they, they, they just called us the 70 millimeter print crew. Can we, we were, say she was that. part of the 70 millimeter print team? Yeah. And then she can expand that was, that on was it? what we did. And then uh, <laughs> I did that for... Man, I don't know. Four, four or five months we worked on that, and then they sent me to Atlanta to run it. No, oh, wow! For like, yeah. for like screenings, like was it like for preview uh, screenings and stuff? A, or? Uh, I just worked. I had one location. It only showed in Atlanta in seventy millimeter in right. the entire state in one spot. No, so it was at yeah. an AMC there in uh, Morrow. Morrow, which is like. A, a little suburb there in Atlanta. Mm. Wow, wow, that's interesting. That, yeah, that would I, be the place. This is this is something we're we're gonna have to bring this into the show. Yeah, I mean we this will. is oh, this, okay. this is so this is so incredibly cool. I I saw the film on the big IMAX screen, and it was just mm-hmm. oh, I'm just so thrilled that you are here on our show. I, oh, I bow shit. down to you. No, 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 no. No, no bowing down. It was, oh, uh, come on. it was a, come on. a pleasure. To, it was a pleasure. And everybody was so, everybody was so nice. Uh, everybody on there was like so nice. And they, they treated us really well. Like I got a crew jacket for Christmas. We didn't Ooh, expect wow. that. They just sent us like a crew. Oh, jacket. I was like, wow. Oh, it's so, so cool. He's so He's very pro film, which is wonderful. Christopher oh, Nolan. Oh, sure, Chris sure. Nolan, yeah, of course. Yeah, that makes me so, ha- it's so happy. I agree. Cool. I agree with them. That's cool. I agree with them. I thought that it looked absolutely amazing in film, and we also played it digitally, and it was really lacking. If you saw, really it. interesting. Yes, that's really lacking. Yeah, that's the, 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 the uh, texture and the yeah, I just to yeah. just, just did not, some, sometimes it it's wasn't like, as sharp. Yeah, it, yeah, it was uh-huh. just totally because I could walk um, in the booth where I was playing it. I could walk, and they had a couple of other houses that were playing it digitally, so I could just compare it. And it was wow, I, that's probably I mean, the best was, way to do it. Yeah, yeah really it was wow. apples and oranges. It looked so wow. incredible in seventies, and uh, you know, as did Dune too. Um, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. we saw that we didn't get to see it in, a, in the IMAX or in the. We had we actually, in fact, we saw it a smaller screen that wasn't very good. The sound quality was great, 
But and uh, wait a minute. So do we... two was also 70 millimeter. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, yeah, I saw it. Big yeah, we did not. Size. Yeah. Like, yeah. I wish so we saw cool. it in that. That's that incredible. Scale, that scope. But uh, yeah. To me, uh, to me, I for, was just in set five, like two days ago, breaking it down. So wow. yeah, I just broke, broke wow. down the print. because They didn't know if they were going to bring it back or whatever. So yeah, it was. And we so, did tenant in 70 as well, right before that. Oh, which cool. Was wow. really cool. cool. I, I just feel when, when you have a big film like that, when it's an event film, it's worth paying the few extra bucks just to see it on like a big screen because sure, even yeah. if you have even even if you have a big screen at at home, nothing can compare. No. Well, yeah, just no. going yeah. in the theater and having to go to your peripheral vision and have all the sound. I mean, I I I loved it. I, it's so amazing. And by I the way, the by the way, just it. to let you know, Larry, we're gonna go see the new Godzilla movie. I'm going to leave my room. I'm going to <laughs> wow. go to another place and be with people and watch it on a big screen. So you actually be in the sunlight part of the time when you're actually might, walking into some the rays theater. may hit me. <laughs> wow. That's cool. let, I, let, may, I may be freckled by the time that you see me. <laughs> right, let right. me know. Let me know if you want some company with you. If you want, Which, you know, uh, okay. sure. Yeah. Godzilla versus Kong or yes. Are they yes. A, no, no. Yeah. A, no, that one. What, what no, is it? Godzilla no. minus Godzilla. One? No, 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 no. That's a which different a, movie, which is a great film. Yes. This is, this is the one the of the best legend, of the year. By this the way. is the legendary uh, recently released Godzilla times Kong, the new empire. So, okay. It, yeah. And it's it to see it on a big screen. I, I, Look, I just think it's worth it. Yeah. I, and it's, I, a, a lot of people don't realize it's a Pinter screenplay. So <laughs> right. I, I look, I originally I, on stage. Now there are a lot of, lot of pauses. The whole thing is told backwards. It's, no, yeah. no, no. It's all no, done in a, a, in a, no. in a kitchen. I it's <laughs> no, but it's, it's neat to see something big monster action on a big screen. You know, when it's in it's your face. a big hill to climb because Godzilla minus what was. Unbelievable. Well, no, that's yeah. it. That's wins. That's yeah. talking about no, wins. That, that's, that's the funny. That's the funny thing is like that comes out kind of out of the blue, an, an actual Godzilla movie from Japan, and you know it's it kind of kind of it kind of puts everything in the dust now that we're trying to do. Yeah. But you know, well, but, but, but at least we're we're hey. keeping the character alive. That's fine. Yes. I know it's great. Yes. But I'm just I'm just saying that as quality movie, I'm guessing. That I will still like minus one best, but uh, oh, look, yeah. Sean, uh, yeah. Sean, Sean, of course you will. But what's so neat is imagine if you are a, a nine or 10 year old kid. And after you see that film, you can actually go to Target and, hey, look, there's a Godzilla toy on a shelf. Yeah, well, yeah, the fact that the fact that the the IP is still very uh, alive oh, and very. But what does that uh, mean? That's know. like going like, imagine <laughs> you're four. <laughs> And somebody hands you some car keys look, and you're like, no, wow. <laughs> look, look, it's like, hey, you know, sometimes hey. So, sometimes I think the, some people on this show get a little some too people. old old and crusty. They get a little James, too old talking to us. Like, oh. Or some, sometimes people on the show just have really good taste and it gets taste, in the way right. of just like yeah. enjoying a, a you know, when mediocre movie. Fun. Yeah, Sean, I bet you. Okay, look, Sean, uh, I hey, know. You're, hey, you know no, what? The last no, one no. I, I enjoyed. The last okay. one, you know, okay. I did enjoy. So Sean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, Sean, yeah. I think, it, you know, because I know you're like little Mr. Reefer. Just go little take a little Mr. Reefer thing. Reefer. And then I'm go not, I'm not sure. how does how does smoking then, Reefer have to do with doing And then you're movies? just going to have such a great time. I'm sure I will. Yeah, I'm sure I will. I mean, it's because, Godzilla. I'll look, see it. Larry has gonna... to pigeonhole us into these things. Yeah. I'm no. Mr. Cocaine. Yeah, I'm Mr. Reefer. <laughs> we have to. I have to be popped up on the goofers <laughs> to enjoy yeah. Whatever movie look, that he decides. I, I, look, I because I know I know what you guys are gonna say at the end of it, but I can Shut tell you the there fuck is up? No. no, there's a <laughs> lot of fun monster action more than there the is. last one, which is why yeah. I think yeah. you may enjoy this one more than the previous right. ones, which is exactly I so. how I felt. Yeah, right. I hope so. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. And I might, I might uh I we don't know exactly when we're gonna see it, but I may uh give you a ring. And we can, you can if, see if, again. if you if you want that, sure, of course, if, no, if that would you be fun. want. I'm just, fun. I don't want to invite myself. And then we could go to yeah. Target and it'd be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let me know too, Matt. Maybe we'll want to go too with you. Well, right, nice show. Going. Thanks for yeah. showing up. No, this. well, Gariana this has been knows. great. But Gary, <laughs> now, now, so 
thank you so much for being with us. Now, do you, did Matt explain? So nice did Matt? Ex- did Matt explain to you what this episode is about? How we no, go about? It? No. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He said to have a uh, ten words at for least, a yeah. word at least, association yeah. that yes. we were going to be doing, which I imagine is very similar to the improv games that we used to play. For example, like if I said, okay, guys, the word is shark. And then each one of them is goes, oh, when I hear the word shark, I think of blah, 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 you know. And, good and fellas. We, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what shark Matt skin thinks. suits. Yeah. Okay. Uh, James. So we all talk about it. And then you the baby would shark say, song. The baby the, shark song. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I, that's what I thought. And they're like, who let, like, who let the like, sharks out? And then you would say, well, I thought of shark. And when I think of shark, I think of blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of like okay. a neat little thing. And, and just think of the listeners at home. They're playing along with us. And it'll be like so, horror, horror, okay. sci-fi, superhero, fantasy related, obviously. Or Genre right. related. Yeah. Yes, Try to right. stay away from, you know, Cassavetes, unless he's, it's or, the, unless unless it's, he's uh, in the Fury. The Omen. Or yeah. Say, yeah, or the Fury. or uh, yeah. Not the Omen. Rosemary's Baby. Yeah, yeah yes. Or, or, incub- or incubus, or <laughs> right. uh, two minute warning. Columbo, Columbo's not <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, or, or but you know, like interiors. We would right. want to say that. No, right, no, James? no. You interiors would, has we, to be in this uh, one. Uh, <laughs> well, well no, I, guess, I guess it does have to. So uh, yeah. we'll see. Well, you know. All right. So let's let's start it. What do you say? <laughs> oh so, my god! It. You should have been recording because there was some gold going on. Oh, we're recording. <laughs> so we're okay, recording. good. So like before, what's going to happen is Matt is going to open the show using a little creepy voice. We're going to introduce ourselves. We're going to say what the topic is, and then he's going to introduce you as our guest, and then we'll go to town. Okay. 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 All right. All right. And so, um, yes. And yes. Th- for this episode, was the first one? Was I think it, it was the, the Monster Party Word Association test, right? Or game? No test. Yeah. So this should be really part two, because I know because yes. we we yeah okay so this will be the Monster Party Word Association game was called game. Part two. Is that what it yeah. was? Yes. Okay. Yes. So get word Monster Party Word Association game part two volume yep. two. Volume two. And, and, okay. and, and there's really no right no, or wrong you. answer. There's no there is wrong not, no. answer. But you'll make there be. Well, again, it's great if it's kind of genre related. Yeah, yeah that know? would be that would be nice. Ideally, but um, it's like, hey, when you say that word, what's the first thing that pops in your head? So okay. I right. think we I think we all got it, right? Yes. Okay. So let's get to and this. Th- get, get around what we'll probably do maybe about let's say eight words maybe uh, each of us one at a time and, and then probably when we get to the end that's probably an hour and a half we'll do like a lightning round we'll say maybe a couple really fast and just okay. to give you an out. idea and then we're out and thank you again for Good. being with us all right here we go right and thank you for all your work on on oppenheimer thank you for your service <laughs> I, I think, yeah i i it was an honor when George Killian thanked all the crew, I felt very good. In- oh my and god, this, that's incredible! This is, and this is something I, I hope we can just revisit when we get to the end. When yes, we're say, yes. So, what are you Definitely. working on? Because this is this is this is gold right here. This it is, is gold. I, I I mean, I didn't know, and I'm just I'm just, again I'm so honored. I'm thrilled to have you. 